the Batman. Oh boy, am I thrilled that you're joining us today, and I think you're gonna be pretty happy that you joined us as well, because on today's episode of the DoD 45, we have DJ abilities. Enjoy. Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? Stop what you're doing and listen. D-O-D-45. This is the DOD 45 show, drawing over discussions 45 minutes with a special guest. Welcome. I'm your host and resident artist, Ty of Art by Ty, and with my co-host, Adrian Taiwali'i, we're having conversations with people who I admire and am inspired by. On this episode, I'll set a 45-minute timer, put my pen to the paper, and we'll learn about our guest through an interview-style discussion. So stay right here with us to experience some laughs and maybe even learn a thing or two. D-O-D-45 Greetings, humans. Okwa Tenzin Wan, Malo. All right, we got a lot to get to. Uh, there's a lot to cover before, uh, and with little time to cover it before our guest DJ abilities uh, shows up. So we'll just jump right into it. How do you, how do you feel about that, Adrian? Okay. You good with that? Uh, we are now in the Utah studio, so it, we got a little bit of well, too, no one cares. Uh, <laughs> my favorite thing in the world. Is people who make things, music, art, etc. So I'm just putting that out there for you people, for you to know. Did you know that? I'm sure you did. Here's a question for you, Adrian. Is remote viewing possible? What does that mean? <clears throat> um, where you can view, you can get into a tra- uh, like a transcendental. Is that the word? You can get into like a meditative state and v- remote view uh, things that are happening in other areas. Like if we, like you could go. I can remote view this podcast on my phone anywhere I am. Right. But I'm talking about as an individual, can you like at night fall into a dream state and travel into uh, and, and, and kind of maneuver about in someone else's home? You're, you are turning into Sal Gav- Governale. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> just because I asked the question, remember, doesn't mean that's what I think. I'm asking you, is remote viewing possible? I wouldn't know. Okay. Well, we'll move on from that one because I don't know either. <laughs> um, hey, uh, have you ever stolen anything? That's none of your business. Okay, cool. Yeah, hearts. <laughs> Oh, shit. You did. You stole my heart, and uh, it's time to pay it back. Well, I guess you have been for years. Uh, or has anyone stolen anything from you? Yeah, our house got robbed twice when we were kids. Robbed? Like someone? Uh, our, or, uh, like a burg- oh, burglary. Oh, burglary? No. Mm-hmm. Shit. So, yeah. Uh, that, and what happened there? Nothing? No, no. They spit on my wolf poster, oh. a big Logie, in my bedroom. Oh, my God. So it was and an I ex-boyfriend? I think <laughs> someone took... A poop and wiped their butt with my blanket or oh something. Oh my god! A po- like a like a action. I don't poo poo. They did the poo poo. <laughs> I don't know where they pooped, but I'm pretty sure they wiped their. That butt. is awful. That must uh, have been an ex boyfriend or a jealous with girlfriend. Other things around the house, uh, but those were the things that impacted me personally. And you guys called the police and took and had that taken care of. I guess right. we must have. Remember know. when we came home from a long trip and someone it was like. Pretty late in the night, and someone had, was breaking into my brother's car. Yeah. He lived right next door to no, us that at wasn't, the time. I don't think that was a trip, was it? We were just home. You were a late, you're a night out, so you no, just noticed. I No, because I think we had came home. We had just got home. It was late at night. Ah, it doesn't matter. But yeah, I just saw the guy out and breaking into my brother's car next door. Mm-hmm. Come on, I mean, sorry, yeah, into my brother's car because he used to live next door to us. And I went out there and, in my boxers because <laughs> it was late. It was like three in the morning. Mm hmm. I was like, what are you doing, man? He said, he's tried to claim he was a repo guy. And my brother's like not someone who would be getting something repo. No, so. <laughs> ever. I already knew he was full of shit, but he had a screwdriver in his hand. So You didn't want to get shanked. I didn't want to get shanked, but I tried to keep him there as long as possible. And then I kind of, yeah, as he drove away, I let him know never to come back in this neighborhood. or he will, The next time he will go leave our neighborhood in a body bag but um <clears throat> so that was from getting stolen from i once i i don't know if i told the story on the show but 
I stole a whole bunch of pennies from my dad's penny collection. A whole bunch, like a, a lot. And I used to take it over to the local Circle K, which was called Mr. G's at the time. And I would play and I would turn them in to get quarters to play this video game, Ghosts and Goblins, which I loved. I freaking love Ghosts and Goblins. You play arcades at all? No. Why? Did you ever growing no. up? No. You- video games have been of zero interest to me. The only one that was somewhat interesting was Duck Hunt because that cute dog. Right. That is a cool one. <laughs> That's the only one I ever played. <laughs> I knew I was going to start freezing. I just oh, it's cold in here? Jacket. This is not this. Um, <clears throat> yeah, but arcades are different than video games. You know? No. Okay. I don't know that. It's all the same to you? Yeah, they're all, vid- they're all games that you just waste your time on. Uh, are you going to... Can I? Let me ask you a question real quick. Okay. What's the worst... I'm going to ask our guests this question, but what's the worst sound? <laughs> Was that me doing that? That's, that's oh. the worst sound. I don't like to listen to people chew or make mouth noises. Besides, like speaking and singing and stuff. So you're not a big fan of ASMR? That's, well, that's why I don't like you to eat cereal. <laughs> why, why do you listen to <laughs> it happening? It's funny. That's it. That's your answer? Um. Bad sounds. No, just what's uh, the worst sound? Cats like screeching, <clears throat> like cats getting raped. So that's always a bad sound. Oh, and like the alley, like an alley mm-hmm. cat. Yeah, that's a yucky sound. <clears throat> I have one that I think you're, you're 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 forgetting, but I'm sure you will agree with me. You want to hear it? Sure. Uh, emergency sirens, like tornado sirens. Yeah, I don't. It's I'm less. I don't mind it so much now since we live in a town that um, puts them on uh, every, every month. Yeah. But it's still an awful sound, like the sound of <clears throat> the sound of sirens, or like the that sound that when the phone the uh, what's it, Amber Alert the Amber Alert's bad. That but. and when the phone like, makes that sound like storm coming or, or you know like a tornado. I, mm-hmm. I think the tornado sirens is the worst sound. And I was when I I was thinking about these horrible sounds. I was thinking about how bad I hate that tornado sound. And I was thinking about that time we were in the um, we were staying in Lafayette, uh, Louisiana. Mm-hmm. I was right after a show, and and we got up in the it was morning time. We were at a hotel, and it was like you could see the the sun was starting to come up. You must have been awake for a minute. What happened is I woke up, went to go get coffee. I could see I woke up with the sun. <clears throat> And so it was, I saw morning, okay, went to, we had a, our hotel room had a bedroom and like the living room kind of place. And I went into that living room area where the kids were to go to the bathroom or make coffee or something. I came back in to get something, my phone, and it was dark again. And I was like, oh no, get up, everybody up. Yeah, because the tornado, because was our phones going off with the tornado warning? Uh, no. <laughs> You, I think I woke you up when I came in, and and then something happened, and you also knew. And yeah, the, just you could hurried. feel the pressure on the wind on the because ho- yeah. we were on the th- third floor, and like the pressure on the windows, you could feel it and hear it. We that at the time too, we had our dog and our kids. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I hadn't been awake for more than three minutes. I don't think that yeah, came on quick. So we ran downstairs. Oh, we, you know what? We felt it coming, so we ran downstairs to check out, and we were going to try to get in the car and leave. Remember. And then uh, all of a sudden it was like upon us and we were like, holy shit. And then all of a sudden, like all the doors in the hotel started to close and like maybe a siren or something started going off. But we had the dog and the kids. So we like we were trying to figure out where to go. And, uh, smartfully, you were like, let's go to the staircase. But the stairwell the or stairwell. the bathroom. But I didn't know. But for some reason, we didn't go right to there. Yeah, because the hotel staff was like, oh, oh that's, that's right. fine. We can just go in this room in the back. So we went into the wash room. Where the washing machines where are. Where the yeah. washing machines and, and, and like all the employees. And we, were, and we were, me, you, and the dog, our big dog, and our kids were like hiding under a desk. Mm-hmm. And I was like looking at my dog, looking at uh, the, the, you know, the, my fit, the family, and I'm looking at these, all these employees. Like, 
uh, I felt staff. Extra bad for the some of these employees because their kids were in school. I know. Yeah, it was scary. It was a, it was a scary moment, and and I was just watching my phone, waiting for it to pass, and then it passed, and then I thought here we I thought we were in like this room in the center of the hotel. <laughs> it had passed, and then the employee, one of the maids, like opened up the door that we in the room we were hiding, and that door just went right outside. Yeah. But it was, yeah, then the, the sun was out, birds were chirping. That was a... That Are you thinking about that because of all the tornadoes down in the yes, Mississippi Delta? Yeah, the recent tornadoes. And I, 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 don't, I don't, usually I avoid that and I won't read stories because I just don't want to hear it. But there was a story about like, what do you do? How do you protect yourself? And I see these everywhere, you know, on like, because I want to know what's the best. We've got lucky. We've been in a couple that time in Oklahoma City, that tornado. We've been nearby a couple. Well, that one came through and we were watching the news, remember? And the guy was like, hey, it's right abo- right upon you guys. So we ran downstairs, went down into the bar lobby, and the people in the lobby were just sitting at the bar. And the lady, I remember the bartender, she was like, I ain't satisfied until I see it actually touch down. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, outside the windows, and it was an all-window hotel, but the trees were completely folding over from the, the wind. Yeah, that was crazy. But what was I? What was I? Oh. But every time I click on one of those where it says like what to do in this, there's nothing. There's no. never any information. Let's go to the interior, the furthest interior place. And stairwells are normally a cinder block, I think, for fire escape reasons. So stairwells, great, but they do have a outside door that leads to them. Oh, yeah. And then bathrooms are usually interior and don't have windows in hotels yeah and then in the one that i read the lady said in this if you're in a small home with and this is this was about if you don't have basement Mm -hmm. it said uh yeah don't just depend on going into the bathtub but then it didn't have any other information and i'm noticing that a lot with news stories on online they say like it's like clickbait they Mm -hmm. they give you the headline but then you go read it and there's nothing there's nothing there there's no information no news no coverage I'm like, yeah. what the fuck? Who? Low ground ditches if you're lucky enough to have a ditch, but then the the amount of water that's probably pouring down that yeah. ditch would be full. So that's all kind of bad. Not the best information. Can you hear me? Uh, a little bit, but it's because I have our monitors down a little lower. So you it's, you tend you're you're thinking okay. it's not as loud as it is, but it is actually just fine. We'll we'll probably have to cover. Um, I have something that I wanted to do, cover, but I'm going to do it at the end of the show after our guest because mm-hmm. we kind of were running a little behind. Uh, <clears throat> and then you said you had something you wanted to discuss, so we'll probably cover mm-hmm. that. Well, I had a question to ask you, but oh well, let me let me do these real quick so I don't miss out on these before he gets here. And these are just I, I like to go through some some credits and some things that I know of of our guest before I get to the guest things. Atmosphere's new. Uh, new songs out um he's got a new ep out but uh, there's a song bigger pictures great song and on my 21st birthday already had my first born baby boy and maybe homie saved my life but papa kept the motor running i'ma come and see you later trying to color up some paper trying to make this right i realize most experiences are coincidental but i'll never let go of these regrets i hold that's why the pieces that we're missing always felt more special better bring some bigger pencils to sketch my soul but yo when i was 31 both Burning them. Thought that I was lost in the jungle, but I was in search of something. I really like it. And then the song OK. And it and OK the song's called OK. But it feels like a like a throwback atmosphere summer jam. Oh, it's got a good feels like a what do you call that? Well, a throw yeah, throwback. Uh, that but that song, that music video has Taryn Manning in it. She's the uh, actress from Orange is the New Black and She's also in Eight Mile. She's in a lot of things, but uh, she's in in that music video. Sometimes I'm probably tongue tied. Got me staring at the sun like my shoes ain't come untied. The clown face got replaced by this mountain of the Midwest average from the mid 2000s, huh? And being the best was never the intended destination. I just want appreciation for my presentation. Even if I was the only human left in population, this is dedicated to the dedication. You better love yourself today, cause tomorrow will be harder. Put your guard up, don't let them penetrate your armor. Collect whatever crumbs you got and keep them in a bread box. You knew I was the one when I was sleeping in the wet spot and maybe if you had it down. and she's agreed to come on the show with us on the DOD 45 so she'll be on an upcoming episode which will be cool 
to have an actress because we haven't really had like a well we had Whitney on he's a great actress uh, well yeah um, and then she's not an actress I know I know what you're saying <laughs> but I just saw that the award shows are trying are considering eliminating gender awards and and I've I have heard not in this current climate but for a long time uh, there were people the women actors said they just want to be actors not actresses or something i don't know <laughs> uh i also wanted to point out some a couple of songs that i've been listening to a lot lately that are really awesome the song whoa 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 by sleeping dogs andrew and jesse the tree hey, before i fall asleep i think of a bar Carved in the sheep's wool, tallying my lucky stars. It's hard to keep on the paperwork piling. Gas light shining, old cycles start chiming in. So I'ma try again. Ten toes down, deep breath, new day, blow the end, oh, ow. Level headed, but the dread get loud. So I let the record deck drown the sounds out, down, but I'll rise again. Steady water in the flower pot, peppers on the counter. I really enjoy that song i haven't I, I haven't got sick of it yet and it, i've almost looped it over and over again it's really good check that one out and then co-defendants album is out this is crime wave and it's phenomenal i love it i really truly do uh a while ago chesky before they were even done recording chesky texted me the songs def cons and abscess eyes are like a local anesthetic like an ointment use a suit an abscess tooth inside a lion's head and i've tried to pull it by the root but the pain that you showed me makes me know it's absolute boo they loving you push me to the end right down too much more now yeah 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 you better me 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 a thousand lay lay legs on the say 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 now When he texted them to me, I listened to him and I immediately called you. You were working outside. I was like, check these out. This is awesome. This is going to be a hit. So yeah, Codefendant's new album's out. And uh, speaking of Chesky, I was going to, I do want to bring this up. So we were drove back from, this was in the summer, last summer, right? We drove back from Pennsylvania to Utah overnight to go, not only to, but we had to come to our Utah house to go catch a show with Chesky and our guest today dj abilities that we drove whatever that long that is like 27 hours or something maybe and got some i think we did it over a couple of days yeah i mean obviously we had to help. yeah but i think it's like a 27 hour drive we got to utah got a little bit of rest and then went and had breakfast with chesky mm-hmm. at uh one of our favorite spots but i st- <laughs> It was a long trip, and then I started having a. I had a Bloody Mary with breakfast, and then. Oh, I know where you're going. <laughs> and then another drink, and then they and then Chesky had to go do sound check and that. So we went came back home for just a minute, and then we went to dinner like a pre dinner, before the show, and and it was at a this uh, yeah this place called the Bayou. They have a lot of beers on tap. Anyway. And that was right across the street from the venue that they were playing. So we went there and had a few had a few drinks with their dinner. And then Chesky finished his sound check, came over and had a couple of drinks with us. Then we went to the show. And at the show, had I had a few more drinks. And I had been drinking that much prior to that. It was just a little too much. You had been drinking all day. <laughs> it was all day. hard all night. Yeah, and I didn't really eat all that much. Anyway, after the show, that that time we had just spoke with DJ Abilities a few weeks before that show, and he had said that he was going to come on DOD 45. So I was like, oh, yeah, we should at least talk to him. And long story, uh, it's a long story, even longer. I'll try to shorten it up. I didn't realize how much I had drank. You know, sometimes that happens to you. But I, I went to go to like say hi to him, and it, and I wasn't sure. I was gonna try to go with like the busting balls, bro, kind of thing. I don't know. I was just 
you were trashed, and I was trying. I was trying to reel you in, but there's no reel in you in. No, because I it was just I was beyond. Yeah, it's it sucks. It was so it's you made math out of yourself. I did. That's what you're getting at. That's what I was getting at. It was it's <laughs> embarrassing too because like just he just recently been like five m- months sober, and that's like the last thing you want to do is have a conversation with some drunk dumbass. <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, that was uh, my... my I'll tell you, I had fun. I had... I, listen, the show was awesome. Okay, let me go through run through quickly before he uh, before our guest joins us with our guest DJ abilities. Um, I read somewhere that uh, someone say that, and I actually think it's justified that he's a virtuoso on on the on the turntables. Um, obviously, he's a founding member of um, Idea and Abilities. R.I.P. Idea. Um, I Idea passed away in 2010. That's a long that, time ago. that was a long time ago. He was tw- he was 28 years old. Um, he, uh, Abilities is a longtime artist on the Rhyme Sayers label. He was an early member of the group Atmosphere with, uh, with Slug and, um, and Ant. Uh, he's a member of 1200 Hobos. That's a DJ and graph crew, uh, which also includes Buck 65, 62, Jail, Dose One, and DJ Mayonnaise and others. I, DJ Mayonnaise used to watch, we used to see him on some of the live streams a lot. I haven't seen him on there often. I wonder, hopefully, we didn't say anything dumb. That got uh, if, if anyone did, it was pretty me. <laughs> uh, Ability's debut album with Idea was called First Born. That was in 2001. It's time to clean MTV out of your ears And listen up like a good student Idea and abilities is here To turn robotic cheap back into humans I gotta speak so the facts get heard I collapse the last fraction nerve This is much more than just your average rapper's words As it burns and laughter hurts The passengers of my head flight Dead right if a clash occurs That ass gets served Better luck next life I blast the germs on the wall of shame Cause their songs are all the same And it's played Talking how you platinum on the first record you ever made And the underground MCs these days Don't seem to make the grade Too busy being bitter about their situation To create a Right away to break the chains to that face, and I don't trust the mangy mutt label pets talking dogs. Uh, Rhyme Sayers just recently released it, uh, uh, released a vinyl of it, and I'm proud to say I do own a, as a new vinyl collector, I do own a copy of that on vinyl. Uh, he did the scratching on LP's first solo studio album, Fantastic Damage. That was in 2022, or I mean, sorry, 2002. That album is an anomaly. That's like one of my favorite LP albums. I'm sure it's a lot of people's favorites. Uh, it's it's a, it's an anomaly in a very good way. Um, he released two other albums with uh, uh, with Idea. Uh, that album, the album E and A, that was released in 2004. Fantastic album, um, and by the throat, 
that was in 2009. Also another fantastic album. But I think you're pretty, pretty sure you will profit, you will get hurt. I eat my words, they taste like dirt. I'm only ashamed because I know what it's worth. Find my comfort inside blame. Shove my pride back down my face. My worst habits waking up at least once a day. Balance barefoot on a needle, heaven's just a jump away. Empathy is the poor man's cocaine. And love is just a chemical by any other name. I like the way your pheromones made me sleepy. This far away, I still smell you inside me. Empathy is the poor man's cocaine. The two of them made great music together. Uh, he was also a DJ for Atmosphere, as I mentioned, for LP, and even for my number one MC, uh, Aesop Rock. Um, he's got featured scratches on Unknown Prophets track, The Wrong Route. Get the big picture. And then I don't know if people know this, but he's on a, a Killer Mike track. He did the scratching on Killer Mike's Go. Just like a comma, bitch. Here's some things to check out online. The When music video. Uh, that's a track from his 2021 solo album, Phonograph Phoenix, which I really, really, really enjoy. I, I have that on vinyl. And then these are some older mixes, but I, Adrian, you're going to love them. It's called The Blends Mix, and it's a lot like what he did at the show we saw him at at the station. Uh, that's listenable on I, on SoundCloud only, and it features like cuts with Beastie Boys, ODB, Floyd. It's a like a mix. It's awesome. And then he has another one called Now That's What I Call Fuck Off. Both those mixes are fabulous, and uh, selfishly, I just want an IV feed of them. <laughs> so I hope he just keeps making that. All right, let's 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 take a quick break. We'll be right back with DJ Abilities. D O D forty five. We're real thrilled to have partnered with Hob Sauce for three simple reasons. Their hot sauce is delicious. The owner and creator, David, is a solid dude, and they collaborate with dope artists for their labels, including myself. Boom. Amplify your favorite foods with their award-winning flavors. Head over to Hobsauces.com to get yourself some absolutely delicious artisan hot sauce. Hit it, Bobby. Have sauce, have sauce. What you gonna do? What you gonna do? Put it on your food. Hot sauce. This is Flyover Country. No one's expecting much from us. In fact, no one's expecting anything at all. The coast probably think we're at Walmart right now. Where are you doing on five, by the way? 
Instead, here we are making plans. Big plans. Because in a city where people do so much with so little, what could happen if we gave them more? More beauty, connections, perspectives. This is your chance to be a part of something bigger than yourself. Something that's made of brick, concrete, and steel. But also for blood, sweat, and soul. It's something that can only be possible in St. Louis. Because when no one's expecting much from you, you can do anything. Our city deserves something epic. Long live laborious. Check out our new partners, Brim of the World, a.k.a. Seek, Conquer, and Destroy, a.k.a. Aliens Built Earth. Show them some love and treat yourself right to a new wardrobe or some new headgear. And I'm not talking about braces headgear, I'm talking about hats. Check out all their gear and links at brimoftheworld.com. Hey, real quick, my friends, my art is available for purchase at artbytai.com. So if you like what you're seeing or you want to support the DoD 45 show, the best way for you to do that is to pick up a print or an original at my website. If you're not quite ready to buy, but you still want to help out, leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever else you stream from. And make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel at Art by Ty and engage in the comments. That goes a long way. All right, enough already. Let's get back to the show. Hey, yo, hey, yo, we've been looking forward to having you on. So uh, thanks hey. for joining us. You got a haircut. Uh, yeah, I did quite, quite a while ago. Yeah. We <laughs> saw you last summer and you had long hair. So. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I got a, I got a cut a while ago, though. I actually need a new one. You can see my, my fade is, is going away. But yes, I Is did that- have long hair for like two years or so. Will that be, is that what you go with, uh, like a fade? It's what I had been. Um, I don't know if I'll keep doing that. My son actually just got a really cool haircut and I might get something like his because <laughs> it looks really good. And I was like, we look enough alike. It would probably look good on me too. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I noticed as I started to get into my uh, mid forties, I started just for fun, I'm like, fuck it. Well, it doesn't matter anymore. But I'd, I'd have my barber do like a design in my fade. I'm like, what do I care? <laughs> I actually thought about just shaving my head again because just the ease of it. And I exercise a lot. So it's just I shower twice a day a lot of the times. And but and it does look good with hats. Yeah. But I don't know. Once you shave your head, then it takes a hot second for you to be able to have any kind of hairstyle because it takes a while to grow back. I don't think I'll have long hair again, though. Long hair was like a, a, a pandemic lockdown thing. I did like mm. it, but it was a huge hassle. And it's a pain in the ass. <laughs> it's a huge pain in the ass. And particularly, like I said, I exercise a lot. So, like, it's just so much hair. And it's like, <laughs> once it gets wet, it's just wet. Like, yeah. like forever. And it's just... <laughs> Anyways, it did look cool, though. And I'm glad I did it. It was, it was fun. But yeah. probably yeah, never you again. Change it up. Uh, so before I set this 45-minute timer to do a drawing, I just wanted to mention, I, I noticed that um, Jordan Klepper was rocking the Phonograph Phoenix hoodie. Do you, do you yeah. know him, or does he just a, a fan? Or I thought well, that was he, cool. I, I think so, too. He followed me on Instagram years ago. And it's funny, because I go in and out of social media, Um I just think it's healthy just to take breaks. Like if I don't have any shows coming up, a lot of times I'll just won't even look at it for weeks on end. Um, and, and it feels good. But at the same time, I do like social media. It's fun. And then there's cool things like that where he followed me on Instagram. And if I had not been checking that day, I would never have seen it. And I, I just messaged him and I was like, yo, what's up? And he was really cool. And he said he was a fan. And and we will like message here and there. And when the record came out, I sent him a record and a hoodie and he um he did the the post, which was really fresh. And then obviously I reposted it because it's freaking awesome to have somebody yeah. like him supporting. We've met and he's just a really nice guy, super genuine. He's crazy tall. And um yeah, 
It's cool. Yeah, he seems like he's cool because even when he was doing his interview, like he just it seems like he's fearless. Like <laughs> he puts himself out there. I like him a lot, <laughs> dude. Yeah, he's he's very he's very impressive. Yeah, how are you with like confrontational things like that? Are you good at Are you good at that, or do you mostly like not like to um, rock the boat? I'm more of a peaceful guy. Like I yeah. don't I don't dive into awkwardness or things like that um that's not really my vibe but like when somebody like he he's got a talent for it and a skill for it so it's entertaining and there's like purpose to it as well sure whereas like yeah i'm definitely not a person who enjoys conflict or awkwardness like at all on on the contrary I, i like i'm all about harmony and peace i'm a big yoga guy so that's what i strive for with him, he's so quick-witted that um, he's in and out of there before people realize he may have said something that would even offend him. Yeah, it, it helps to be witty, too. He's really witty. <laughs> yeah. And also yeah, he have good editors. He deserves his job, for sure. Yeah, yeah. for he's, sure. He's talented. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, all right, I'm going to start this timer, and I'm going to do a drawing for you. I came up with a little something. Um, I, I, didn't, I guess I didn't realize about um, – I know you go by Max sometimes, but I just didn't realize. I'm assuming it's Max from where the wild things are. It is. You got it. That is what it is. Yeah. So, all right, Adrian, do you have your timer? My timer's broken. Oh, yeah, sure. Okay. Here we go. And again, thank you for joining us on the show. It's, hey, it's no really problem. a pleasure to have you here. Thanks for having me. Which of these Gregs do you know? Greg Anthony <laughs> or Greg Ostertag? One, both, or neither? Both. Yeah, well, awesome. Okay. I, obviously, you're saying no of them. I don't know either of them personally. So, are you a are you a sports fan? Are you a basketball fan? I actually one of my first dreams was to be in the NBA. Oh, awesome! Yeah, so I, I do like basketball a lot. Do you play pickup games? Like, do you still play? I used to. I stopped and then I came back to it because there was a a basketball court by my house, so I went there and played pickup. But then once pa- the pandemic came, nobody was uh, playing. And then when it came back, I was like hesitant to just be like heavily breathing around strangers. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> so yeah. like, I was like, I'll pass on that. And then it's always, I don't know, like the last thing I need is to like mess my hand up from sure. like a, a ball getting, you know what I mean? Like yeah, absolutely. let's say yeah. I break a finger or something and I can't perform properly for months like what's the point and yep. and anyways i like i love hot yoga i love lifting weights i love jogging so there's already so many other forms of exercise so it's not like i need it to supplement staying in shape i realistically already exercise probably too much right um but you know what's the saying like find something you love and let it kill you or something like that yeah exactly so <laughs> i've never I heard that take that, that mind state towards um exercise and stuff and it it helps keep me um away from negative things sure well and it it just feels good like even we were running late today because we we have to do we do a run every morning but like i i I couldn't i couldn't just like pass even though we were running late for some reason it's like an obsessive thing like i I gotta get my run in I, i i won't be the same or so, I don't know. That is the case for me. So I, I, that makes well, sense. Well, no, it's, it. it's actually scientifically proven. I mean, there's – do you know who Andrew Huberman is? I don't think so. He's a, a dude from Stanford. He's a neuroscientist from Stanford. He talks about how if you go outside and get in the sunshine, like, first thing in the morning and, like, having the world, like, go past you, which you would be right. doing when you run mm-hmm. – it's really good for a certain part of your brain um, to help with depression and things like that. And then um, exercising in the morning, same thing. He says it's really good for you. So yeah, that's probably you why ever, you feel good. Yeah. It, it, well, yeah, I, I did hear that the running thing was good for, um, they were, they did some studies on like Alzheimer, like, uh, dementia and alzheimer's it was good for that too because you're oh yeah it's a re, your, your mind your eyes are refreshing all the time while you're out running so yeah all you people out there they're sitting around get out for a little run or at least a fast walk <laughs> yep the bang for the buck on exercise is just through the roof so because you don't have to be like 
super intense with it. Like I love exercising. So for me, I actually have to, I'll ex- I, I really enjoy exercising in the morning, but a lot of times and, and recently I've had to start putting it later in the day because I'll get up in the morning, I'll exercise so much that I'll come home and then I won't want to do anything else. I oh, just want to like yeah. sit and relax. So I'm like, no, I need to, to scratch. I need to work on my art. I need to do these types of things. And then I put exercise towards, towards the later part of the day. Um, but my point is that you don't need to do that to see the benefits. It's like you really only need like 30 minutes a hand a couple times a week and, and you'll still see very significant benefits, at least from the science and research that I've seen. Well, yeah, the scientists say it's the, it's the closest thing we have to um, living longer as far as uh, you know, making life live long or whatever I'm trying to say there. Yeah, yeah longevity. How, longevity, yeah, because everyone's always looking for like how do we live forever and all that. And really the only proven way so far is good, is good health and exercise. Um, yeah. If you were offered an unlimited amount of money to make an album – but could only use samples from either of these two, which would you choose, Gregory Isaacs or Isaac Hayes? Isaac Hayes. Oh, cool. Do you, do you, do you fuck around with reggae at all, though? Like, uh, I mean, I love every style of music. Now, sure. I would say that my wealth of knowledge concerning that genre is very limited, but that's just another door for me to open at some point in my life. But I've definitely, I definitely like reggae. You know? Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. It's, it's not something that I am well versed in by any stretch of the imagination. I just like to see hear some, uh, just like some wild mixes. I'm sure there are out there, but uh, yeah, I, I'm yeah. I'm sure Z Trip's got some. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, hey, uh, Robert De Niro as Max Cady or as Travis Bickle? Uh, Travis is taxi driver. What's what's the other Max one? Max Katie is uh, fear Cape Fear. Oh, I got to go taxi driver. Okay, uh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Cape Fear was cool, but like I don't know, taxi driver has more gravitas in my opinion. Yeah, that one's yeah, that one sticks hard. Like especially if you seen it when you were younger, because I think I was like fourteen when I saw it, and that yeah, that that was a very impactful movie. I, just that Max Katie. There's a laugh. He's laughing in the movie theater, and it's like this. I want to hear someone use it, so I try to bring it up to people. I want to hear it in a song or something. Okay, then I quit as your son. Okay, it's a it's a really creepy laugh, and it's like a nonstop laugh. Um, it feels like something Dibs should do. Then, yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely a Dibs kind of thing. Uh, what? Being a health, being healthy, like, um, do you eat cereal? <laughs> you know, it's you know what's funny is I actually just started eating cereal again, and I did it more so because oh, so I eat eggs and toast, and I was like, I need more calories because I'm just exercising a lot, and I was like, what's a an effective way for me to do that? And cereal was the answer. Oh, so what's the, what's the cereal? I eat, it's some kind of honey almond thing. Cascadian Farms, I think it's called. Like oh, honey wow. almond oat or something like that. Mm-hmm. And then I double up with almond milk. It's kind of like honey bunches of oats, I think, isn't it? Like probably. It's probably like the bougie like the organic, organic one. version. Yeah. <laughs> That's like the, that's really what I spend my money on. Like I'm, um, I live very simply, but I definitely spend money at the grocery store. Like yeah, I, I'm getting all the organic. I'm getting all the high quality food. That's like the one luxury I I let myself go with. Yeah, we talk about it often. It's expensive to eat healthy. <laughs> it is, <laughs> which it should it shouldn't be, but it is. But the thing is, if you cook everything yourself, then you kind of mitigate that to a degree. And I cook 95% of my meals. So, And then I eat a lot of beans. I eat a lot of eggs. So those, even the organic kind, is, is still a lower-priced item just because those items aren't that expensive. Right. What was your first concert that you went to as a kid? or um, Probably Lollapalooza. 
the first music that I really got into where I was able to attend something was like the 90s rock stuff. So I went to Lollapalooza, the Red Hot Chili Peppers Lollapalooza, and I actually saw Nirvana live. Oh, Those awesome. are like two, two concerts I certainly remember when I was young and in junior high school. Does Lollapalooza still happen? It, it went away for a, a, quite a while, and then I do believe they've brought it back, but I haven't been. I just saw an ad for it in Chicago this year, so it's back. Do you like? Do you enjoy doing those, uh, like doing festival shows like that, where it's like not everybody there is actually a fan of yours? You know, they're kind of like. Do you enjoy doing shows like that? I I really enjoy festivals. I, I really yeah. like being outside. Um, I love like a, a a packed, sunny outside show, and f- yes, and I I do like playing in front of people who don't know me because I feel like my set is really it's it's built for people who don't know me as well as for people who know me so it's i enjoy the challenge of winning people over and i think i have the necessary tools to do it and it's usually a bigger hassle like when it's your show you know like the security and all all those types of things are a lot easier when you're dealing with a whole bunch of different acts and you're just one little cog of the machine, it can be logistically more difficult and frustrating. But there is a, a certain energy that comes with it that I find really exciting. And and I like winning new people over. I think it's really cool. Is your approach or, or like your set, Will you? is it different if you're playing for a crowd that's like there for where you're the headline or they're just there for you? Or and like, will you, is there a difference in how you approach it or what, you, what set you'll do? So here's... Here's the thing. So I have a, I I have what I do, right? So like, there's certain, I'll never not do something that I don't want to do. <laughs> I don't know if that grammatically makes sense. <laughs> but like, so I have all the style mixes and scratch routines and songs that I think are awesome and I want to perform. Now, within that pool of stuff, I can then navigate given what show I'm doing. So like case in point, when I went on tour with the far side, I did more like early nineties stuff than I would do just in my own set Mm -hmm. because I knew, okay, of course there's going to be early nineties fans at the far side show, but all of those early nineties songs are songs that I would play anyway. Sure. So I just wouldn't have played like probably so many in that amount of time for my own set. So it's like, let's say just, just throwing random numbers out there. Let's say I have two hours of like curated mixes and scratches and things that are like to a T the way that I want them. Then I can just pick and choose from that amount of time to curate what I'm doing. So yeah. but for like my personal solo shows, I know exactly what I'm going to do. And then if I'm opening, then I'll adjust it according to whom I, to who I'm playing yeah. for. Yeah, that makes sense. Or just to, just to be clear though, but I'll never just like be like, Oh, I'm opening for such and such. I'm going to play yeah. this song. I hate, you know, <laughs> like, like I'll never do anything <laughs> that I don't want to do. Right. It's yeah. Stem from what I do. Do you have a preference of how long you prefer a set to be? Like, what's a perfect amount of time for you that you? I like? think between sixty and seventy-five minutes. Is yeah, perfect. cool. Yeah, that's because, awesome. Because you want it to be like, it's you don't want shit just to be longer to be longer. Like, yeah, it's it's about particularly with DJing because other like like if you're in a band setting you have the songs that you're playing and you have like the beginning, the middle of the end. So they're, they're like these, like, like, like a song is almost like a miniature set. If you're a band, it's like there's that one and then you could stop and then here's this one and then you could stop. So you can just kind of add and subtract much easier. And and don't get me wrong. You still need to have an, an overarching flow. It's still important. But when you're doing DJ sets, you're burning through like, at a third amount of songs. So it's more like the whole set is one big song. So if I just make it longer in a certain section, 
it's gonna it's gonna mess up the whole flow of the whole thing so like i would rather do a 55 minute set that just is arcing perfectly than a 70 minute set that has dips that don't work properly because when you're DJing correctly, it's all about setups. It's kind of like stand-up comedy. Like the punchline is the thing, but if you don't have a great setup, the punchline is not going to land as hard. Like it's you got to have that. And so if you just if you make the setup line longer, what's the point? Like it's you see what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, like just like and and using comedy as an analogy is perfect. You know, Anthony Jeselnik said something about this that I saw recently and he was like, I want to have my jokes, the exact length that they need to be like no extra words, like just like perfect. Like if I added one word, it would be less funny. If I took one word away, it would be less funny. And I, I think I subscribe to that more or less. And there's a, a lot of parallels too, because it's like, when you're DJ and you're on stage by yourself too, it's just like you and the audience. And that's, that's a unique thing as a performer. Cause usually as a performer, you have your bandmates or somebody else is there with you. Like if you're in the theater, you have your fellow actors. So, but stand up comedy is even harder though, because it's like, you don't even have equipment, you know, it's just you and the mic. <laughs> it's all and you and the like, mic. <laughs> fucking cool. Do you prefer doing your like a live set where it's just you, or do you like like having a or DJing like for a for a rap group like being a DJ with, a, well, with they're, like they're rappers. both enjoyable, you know? It's, yeah. it's, it's both of them are enjoyable because when you're by yourself, you get to do exactly what you want to do, right? And so yeah. that's cool. But when you're working with the group, like case in point, like when I did the sh- tour with the Far Side, it's like you have these other very talented individuals and you're like front row and center for the show, you know? So that's really cool. Are you, are you competitive in it? Just in general? Yes. I used to be much more competitive when I was younger. And then I I think it's a natural thing when you get older, you just realize you're really only competing against yourself. Like, and you, who you were yesterday, because when you get into the comparison game with others, it's just like, what's the point? Like, unless you literally are a professional athlete, like then it makes sense. Cause it's like, this is the point. But particularly if you're an artist, it's like the whole point of art is to be original. So if you're competing with somebody else by default, you're like comparing your art to them in a way, which it's, uh, it's just kind of, it's just odd to me. So it's like compete against who you were yesterday and and who you want to be like that's all you should be focusing on yeah i agree do you think that's do you think that's difficult for young artists today now with social media and stuff like the amount of art out there online always do you think that's hard for younger artists now to to try to like just go do my i'm doing my own thing i don't need to worry about what someone else is doing um I, i would say i don't know because on a certain level i do have the luxury of being older and and somewhat established so i think that you know when you're when you're trying to elbow yourself into the room you know having a little bit of competitive nature probably would help um i I know it helped me early on um but i i do think the sooner you could just stop focusing on what other people are doing and just focusing on yourself, the better off you're going to be. Yeah. That's great advice. What, which part of your journey has been the, the most enjoyable though? Like the early days of the grind when no one knew your name or the latter years of when you're comfort and being able to look back on those years. I'm going to say now because I yeah. live in the now, like I, I appreciate my past but i hope i never get to a point where i think my past is better than my present Uh, because if if that's the case then i need to adjust my life patchouli or nag champa (laughs) nag champa oh really oh cool yeah yeah do you do you ever burn like incense at all i do sometimes first of candles or or i'll burn some nag champa sometimes Uh, 
Although one of the things that I want to get is I, I keep just not getting it, but is one of the like steam ones because oh, I think with like that's... candles and Nag Champa stuff, the smoke, I've noticed yeah, it like messes with my sinuses. Yes. So if I just had yes. the water, the water would be better, you know? Yeah. I used to burn the, the Nag Champas, but that smoke really gets to me. It's too, it's too much. And then yep. now I love, um, my, for like the best gift my wife will get me is, um, uh, Pine pine needle candles because I love that pine needle gives me makes me creative that smell nice. of pine I, I love cool. it so yeah anyone out there if you want a creative something to help with creative pine helps pine they do needles. say that, that the green the color green the color and green the, yeah and the smell of green things work as creative uh, creative helpers so I, yeah. I never knew the smell thing but I, I did did see about the green thing and so like in my Ableton sessions. My default color for all my clips will be green for that. Brilliant. And I don't know if it's if it's true or not. Yeah, the proof's in the pudding. You make great music, and I've. And I, oh, well, thank you. I save. I usually save the intro to do that, to, so no one has to get praised through their whole discussion. But I really enjoy the the Phonograph Phoenix uh, album. Oh. It's, it's fantastic. So thank good you. on you with that. I really appreciate that. Do you have any guilty pleasure TV shows? Um, so by guilty pleasure, you mean stuff that I'm not particularly like proud that I watch. Yeah. An example for me is I watched 90210 on Melrose Place. <laughs> I, I love okay. them. <laughs> oh, shit. Well, shit. I definitely got Gossip Girl. The original Gossip oh. Girl was my shit. So like. Can you analyze what was that? Why? why? What was it about it that, that, that um, you were into? So I never did, like, I didn't do regular high school or anything like that. So. I have kind of like a bizarre fascination with like that to some degree, I guess, or at least I used to, I don't really anymore, but right. Like, cause I just never did high school. Like I just, yeah. I went to ALC and we just sat in a circle and talked for like an hour or two. And that, that what was is it. ALC? Um, <laughs> it's jokingly assholes last chance. But it's uh, oh, like an alternative school. Yeah, it's alternative yeah. learning center. But you yeah. know, it helped me. It did help me. So it, 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 I think the whole point of it is like, hey, this kid isn't doing regular school. Like, I would just go to school for lunch and then leave. And yeah. like, I mean, I just I wasn't participating. But I I was I used to be an artist, like a visual artist, like you. And the one that I went to had like a visual arts and arts slant to it. That was your alternative high school had that? Yeah. Yeah, so great. And so, yeah, it worked. I think the whole point is just like let's help keep these kids from doing knucklehead shit. Even, even if it's for a couple hours, they're just not around that kind of stuff. And, you know, it worked for me. So That, I, that was the same for you, right? Yeah, me. I, had the, I have the exact experience. High school, like high school, I could, it was too slow for me. Not everything was like just like this. And I hated it. And so I never went. And so I got in a lot of trouble. I was stealing cars, all that shit. But then I got kicked out and I went to this alternative school, same thing. And they had all of their classes were set up at the first of the school. They did testing, are you right brain or left brain? And then huh. based on whatever your testing was, all your classes would be geared to that. And all mine was visual. So all my math, all my biology, all those were all visual. And I graduated with a 3.9, but at, at regular high school, I had like a 1.5, not because I didn't know, but I hated that fucking structure. And that's why I love, I'm a big advocate for alternative schools that can, uh, school's not for everybody. And that's based yeah. off what you're saying. Like, it's just not an environment that works for every child. And yeah, so well, I don't know. And, I, and here's the thing is like, it would be different if every kid had stability right right so what like i didn't have a stable teenage years like it was incredibly unstable so yeah. you you can't expect a kid like my son has had an incredibly healthy stable life so he excels in school and yeah. that was one of the things his mom and i were very focused on like let's make sure he has all of the right things so he's set up to to excel but a lot of kids don't and in order to hopefully keep 
those kids from going down the wrong path, you, you know, you have to provide other options. Yeah. And you know, it helped me. Like I still st- did stupid shit, but like, sure. at least I had, uh, uh, it was, it was positive for me. I, it was positive. for me. Yeah. Was, that's good that to hear. Uh, when you meet people for the first time and they ask you where you're from, what's your default answer? It's tricky because at this point, so like I'm from New Mexico, my dad still lives there, but I grew up, you know, my formative years were in St. Paul. So that's, that kind of is where you're from. I feel like, like, where did you lose your virginity? You know, like where did you fall in love with music? Like there's like that, like 13 to 21, you know, those years are like, so that's like when you're growing up, at least I think, because you're like still a kid, but you're becoming an adult. And, you know, your brain's opening. And so, like, I considered that I grew up in St. Paul. I was actually born in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and still, like I said, my dad still lives there. But the reality is, is I've lived in Milwaukee now longer yeah. than I have any other places. <laughs> so you can make a case that I'm from Milwaukee in a, in a weird sense, just by the longevity alone, plus the current place that I'm in right now this feels the most like a home that uh, yeah. I've ever had in my entire life. So there's a level of like, this is where I'm from. So yeah. on my, um, I think it's like on Twitter, you know, I have like the locations or whatnot. I just have the ABQ dash STP dash MKE. And I just, <laughs> I just rep all of them. Cause I'm like, they're, they're all, it's all real. I read a funny, um, one of those things that, it's uh, things that people from Europe say about Americans or something. And it's always like, there's a, they can never figure out where they're from. <laughs> like we ask them where they're from and it's this whole long spiel. Oh, it's a whole thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, well so, so uh, which of these Coopers have a atypical connection to Milwaukee? And what is the connection? Alice Cooper or Bradley Cooper? Well, it's Alice Cooper from Wayne's World, right? Yeah, that's right. Yes, right. <laughs> Milwaukee. <Yeah. laughs> uh, um, hey, uh, here's one: uh, Nirvana's Nevermind or Alice in Chains' Jar of Flies. Oh, see that that's tough because <laughs> Nevermind was like a really big deal to me at that time, but. Jar of Flies has aged better, like, in my opinion. I like, agree. There's, I mean, yeah, Jar of Flies. There's like, there's like there are gorgeous songs on that album. Yeah, it's, yeah I, played, I played them both last night because last night I was finishing up how I was, like, some structure to what I wanted to ask about. And I did know, I had saw that you were a Nirvana and Alice in Chains fan, so I went back to listen to, I listened to all of Dirt, which is a good album that came out about the same time. I love Dirt. Uh, uh, yeah, it's a great, but I don't know something about Jar of Flies. Well, there is. I don't. It must, it's, like you said, maybe more. it was the formative years. The, the those songs are every one of them is a fucking is a, just a c- complete perfect song. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll put it this way: so, like, Dirt is like a full, amazing rock album, right? It's yeah, wonderful. Jar of Flies, but there's things that are more like similar to Dirt. You could find things that are like in the realm of it. Yeah. Whereas Jar of Flies, I feel like is more unique. It's a more unique piece of art. As far as I know, you know, somebody might be like, what are you talking about? There's a million albums. Like sure, that. I, sure. I don't know about them. It just sounds like a more unique experience and just hearing, I mean, the, the acoustic guitars and the singing, it's just, like I said, like Dirt is awesome. Like I love that sure. record, but Jar of Flies is beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Oh, hold on one second. Isn't Foo Fighters uh, Nirvana and Alice in Chains guys oh, now? Oh, I don't know. Let's see. So Foo Fighters, the drummer is. What you know about oh, that? Oh, there friend. it is. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I just got. Oh, I'm not in our place where all my vinyl is. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a great. Yeah, I, I've. It's, awesome. it, uh, yeah, so great. <laughs> um, okay, so we have the thing where we do useless facts. So I just I came up with a useless fact that I'll share real quick, and then we'll 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 take a question from uh, 
from Mr. Dibbs. Uh, oh. Here's the useless <laughs> fact. The phonograph was invented in 1877 by Thomas Edison, but in the 1880s, Alexander Graham Bell uh, released a, a, an, an improved version from uh, his company, the Volta Laboratory, and that was the, gra- the graphophone. Okay. Uh, yeah, so there's a useless fact. Oh. Also, huh? did you oh. know, I don't know why I didn't know this, but... Or I guess you probably know it. I don't know if Adrian knows. But did you know that they called Jeffrey Dahmer the Milwaukee Monster? Oh, I'm sure they did. He's from here. So. Yeah, I didn't real. I didn't realize that. I didn't realize that was his nickname. Um, <laughs> oh, before I go to dibs, uh, are you getting in any drawing time, or is it just 100 percent music right now? Oh, I, I haven't drawn since my son was little. Uh, my son is really good, though. Oh, great! How old is he? Yeah. He's 16. Mm. He's he's really good. Um, he's way better than I ever was. Yeah, it helps to have an adult, like when your parent, when they can see like, oh yeah, you can, like when there's a, what's the word? Uh, like a, the support of art in, in a home. Sure, It seems absolutely. beneficial. That's awesome yeah, for absolutely, him. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, hey, what about Nas's Illmatic or Wu-Tang's 36 Chambers? Oh, that's Illmatic. Yeah, like, but, but yeah. Illmatic, you could have said any hip hop album. <laughs> would and it would have been Illmatic. Illmatic. Yeah, yeah, that absolutely. album was straight fire it's, all the way. And the thing about it is, like, you know, I would never, if somebody said 36 Chambers, I would never be like, no. It's right. just Illmatic, just, it just, it, it works. Like, it's just a hip hop album. Every song is amazing. And, and, and yeah. also, too, like the age I was when it came out, although 36 Chambers had a huge impact on me as well. So it's like, you know, it's not like, what? I just, right. I feel like a long time ago, I like made that decision, too. <laughs> yeah, I was just like, <laughs> this is the one I think. Because, like, you know, these, these kind of questions happen. And I was like, yeah, that's got to be the one. So, and yeah, they're scratching yeah, on it. And like, like DJ Premier probably is as important to that answer as Nas is because of his contribution to that record. So, is DJ Premier the someone that, that you had heard that, that made you feel like, oh, this is what I'm going to do? This is. Premier probably, you know, there's been so many different influences at this point from so many different genres, but. Premier has like a big piece of that pie because yeah. he was a producer. He was a, he scratched his just, yeah, this premiere, like premiere is a, is a big deal to me. I would love to meet him one day. I would love for him to hear phonograph Phoenix. I feel like he would totally vibe with phonograph Phoenix. Um, wow. That surprises me that you hadn't actually, uh, hadn't met, like, met him but well i mean yeah who knows it, yeah it's just like you, you just assume that all uh everyone knows each other in their industry <laughs> <laughs> it's just like yeah, one of the one, things you do <laughs> one day i feel like one yeah. day it'll happen yeah no of course i think so for sure uh do, did you ever consider doing like a, a costume or mask thing oh like no punk or those well, yeah like a daft punk no. or, or any of that sort of thing i always wondered if Seems hot. It's too hot under there. That's what I was thinking. Like, and I and restrictive. Didn't I read? I think I read. Who does the big head with the marshmallow? Maybe, but someone was having like back issues because of it, <laughs> like real serious back issues. Like, and I'm like, oh man, that's maybe Guar. Yeah. <laughs> not Guar, but I'm sure they have. They. <laughs> are you, yeah, I, mean, are you, I see. You, I see the appeal to it. Like, there's certainly virtue to that, right? Like having the anonymity. And the thea- yeah. like, I do like theatrics on stage. I think when pulled off correctly, that that's really cool. Um, but it just, I'm about comfort, dude. I like being comfortable. Like, yeah. So just to me, uh, that seems very uncomfortable. Yeah, comfort is huge. Uh, let's, yeah, because uh, you're, you're trying to like, dude, you're, you're trying to like, it's already, okay, so I have something I want to express to you, the listener in the audience. Anything that makes that process more difficult, why would I do that? Yeah, exactly. You know, I want to make it as easy as possible. And I I guess easy isn't even the best word. I want to make it as effective as possible. Yeah. And so like, boom. But for them, you know, that 
that's part of the show. Like there is something to it. There's reasons behind it. I know like speaking of Dibs, I know you were talking about his question. I know he used to cover his face with the mask yeah. because oh. it made him feel more at ease and it gave yeah. him like a little bit more edge. So it was like that worked for him and it made it more effective, right? That's why I think that's a better adjective for that. So, but for me, but I'll say this, I almost always perform with a hat because, yeah, yeah because I like when I look down and need to zone in on what I'm doing, I have that little barrier so oh, I can, it like sure. helps me focus in on what I'm doing. So yeah, either your bill or like sometimes I've seen you with a bucket hat, like you could, but you can, yep. while you're looking down, it can block out. Exactly. That. It helps, it helps yeah. give you tunnel vision to yeah. what you're doing. Smart. And it, it helps. Cause I've, yeah. I've went through phases where, cause I don't really wear hats outside of when I perform. So I was like, why? I don't even want to wear hats when I perform anymore. And so I would do shows without it. And it was like, it just, it, the- it, I could tell, just like, it was just different. And, yeah. and then the other thing too about wearing the hat is like, it's almost like I go away for a second. And then when I come back up and I look at everybody, it's like, hey, I'm back. And then it's like, so like even that little bit of movement, because as a DJ, like- you don't move around a lot. You're not like a, a, a lead singer who can access the whole stage. So having the hat gives me like a small but effective amount of movement and yeah that makes sense i think it helps and again it's yeah more it's it's comfort and effectiveness because there's times where i'm doing stuff in my set that are very technical dif- technically difficult for me so being able to focus in on it helps what will you get when you come off say like I know, you know when I when I watch like a band play, there's a lot of jumping and and like a, a, you work up a good sweat. And so I'm just curious because I've never DJed on a show. Do you work up a sweat when you're when you're like uh, doing a whole oh, set? Yeah, Hell yeah, yeah. It's, a physic- it's physically. And, uh, and that's the goal. Like training. I love yeah. it when I'm sweaty after a, a set. It's yeah. like mission accomplished. That's awesome. Well, okay, we'll we'll go to this Dibs question, but he did say something about uh, Dibs is with the mask. I remember uh, he had recently told me that. S- he always questioned why Sage Francis had the picture of his face and everything. And Sage told him, he's like, you know, branding, how important branding was. And then that was when Dibs thought like, Oh, I'll do the mask and the brass knuckles. So I, yeah. know, I thought that yeah. was interesting. Dibs, the Dibs brass knuckles was great. Yeah. yeah. That's like hat, those branding. hats with the brass knuckles. Yeah. Those were yeah. awesome. That's true. Cause you know, uh, whatever episode it was, you were like, how? And I said, Oh, you've got, um, Cecil Lauder on, sh- on your shirt. And you're right. like, how would you know that? And it's because he is on his album. Oh. Whereas so many people who I'm like, wow, we interview and I'm like, I totally thought that guy was something completely different. And these guys aren't on there. Yeah. Covers. Well that's all. Well, yeah, <laughs> one and abilities is good at like y- y- your your image, you're out there. I have just I, sometimes when we're when I'm going through a guest, I, I'm struggling to find like anything about him. Like, man, that to me. I always about branding and putting out my pro like what I make, like and I so I get a little bit of anxiety when I see someone who does something in, sort of in the like artistically, you know, in the public eye or something, and they they're not pushing themselves out there. I get why they don't, but it, but for me, I'm like, man, this is an opportunity. That's what I use social media for to get that out there for people to see. So now nah, I don't. Yeah, there's, I there's definitely a certain point in my life where I realized taking art seriously and having that priority doesn't need to be divorced from being a good business person. Yeah. And I figured that out a while ago. I'm still on my journey. Like my business is still very far behind my art, but I'm on the way and it just a happy marriage of those two things benefits everybody because you're going to do better as the artist. And you're going to get more people to hear or see your art, which ultimately that should be part of the goal. Not necessarily the ultimate goal. I think the ultimate goal should be making honest and quality stuff. But if you're making honest and quality stuff, don't you want as many people to be able to experience it as possible? And the easiest way and most effective way to do that is to have your business correct. Absolutely. Yeah. And then by getting paid to do it, 
you can do it all the time. I get hit up by a lot of young artists. They're like, how do you draw all the time? I'm like, look, I get paid for it. I can draw all fucking day long if I want. <laughs> so, exactly. But then yeah. that opens another can of worms, though, because then you have to, like, stay motivated to keep doing it. And, yeah. like, because I remember when when you're starting out, there's a there's a certain hunger that is present. And once you start succeeding, you can start to lose some of that. And so you have to like re get that from other places or just recap into that. So ultimately, you know what it is like every part of the journey, there seems to be some pro and some con. So just focus on the pro of wherever you are in your stage and, and, and minimize the con. Yep. Yeah. That's great advice. Also, I tell the young artists, like, Make sure it's something that you're passionate about first because it's going to be a long journey and it's going to be a grind. Long and, journey, yeah. dude. And if you're not passionate about it, don't fucking bother. <laughs> I, re- I remember hearing somewhere somebody said, only be an artist if you have to. Yep. <laughs> and, I, and I was like, okay, heard, heard. Because it's not an easy journey. You know, some people, no. maybe it's easier for, they, they get lucky or something. But I... I I have not found it to be easy. And most of my friends, it's not easy. So. The only thing I could do, and it was the only thing that made me feel like a, a an actual complete person. So, yeah. Maybe you had to do it. That's yeah, that's right. Yep. Let's hear what, uh, let's hear what Dibs, uh, Dibs popped in some questions at about 4 o'clock this morning to me. My phone was, <laughs> my text was going off. <laughs> so, uh, and I think they're in a four-part section, so... Give it up, Mr. Tim on the turntable. Listen to more of this. Oh, it burns. It burns <laughs> so bad. Due to a directional miscommunication between me and senior abilities last evening, I've injured myself during my morning workout when I misinterpreted the directions for hot yoga. Soaked myself in lamp oil, <laughs> lit myself on fire, and proceeded to do a series of yoga poses, and that's not what he meant. So I'm in pain. <laughs> that being said, we're going to do uh, true or false questions. Ty and Adrian will give it a go as to whether it's true or false, that abilities will confirm or deny said question. Interesting. Question one. Abilities can be credited as the individual who brought the mosh pit to underground hip hop. Meaning, he's the individual that jumped down into the crowd and starts shoving kids around, much to my joy. True or false? Okay, so, that's what he set up. So he told me mm-hmm. run through the run through the three questions first. We'll answer true or false, and then you can confirm them after we do the three. Okay, Adrian, okay. We'll, we'll we'll do those quickly. What did you say? So the mosh pit is mosh. he responsible? Well, mosh. you mentioned liking rock yeah. as a kid, so I, I could say true. I'm on going. That one. Tr- I'm going true on that as well. Okay, well, let's play the next. Let's play the next question. Poor Dib set himself on fire with hot yoga last night. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Little known fact. Abilities is an uh, accomplished voiceover artist. And uh, <laughs> late 80s vocal enthusiast. True or False. Abilities is one of the original members of Dexy's Midnight Runners. In fact, the song Come On Eileen was originally penned by Abilities and it was called Listen, Daryl. True or false? <laughs> Go. I oh. say false. You're too young. Yeah, that one's simple. <laughs> Though I'll be, I'll be fucking way surprised if that's true. But yes, no, that's uh, definitely a false. All right, last one. No, there's two more. Question three. True or false? And uh, Ty, Adrian, you know, you do the math on this. I don't do math. You you, you (laughs) just fucking do the math. Okay. I'd like you to take myself, abilities, 
an idea and put us in a venue in, let's say, Washington, D.C., after a show on stage. And we proceed to slap box. So let's give it about half an hour, over and over, till security and most of the venue employees are watching and are getting extremely uneasy at the level of enjoyable violence we are having. In fact, blood was drawn. True or false, abilities won every fight between the three of us for 30 minutes with me and idea taking all the L's and abilities remaining undefeated in mm. stage slap boxing. True or false? Uh, I, well, yeah, I'm going to say mm -hmm. based off of Dibs and uh, I'm going to say that's true because he has said some, uh, he has told me, I think he said that uh, Billy's trains I, or did some. I would say true just off of your nature to be working out all the time. Yeah. And you, you're you saying you were competitive. You're not so much anymore, but I bet you're still competitive. All right, all right. So that one I'm going true as well. Okay, I don't play. think you would want to lose that, so I'm saying true. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, the only reason I would go false is yeah, just like Dibs is a, a giant, yeah. a giant human. So you're pretty <laughs> tall too, but I wonder how you guys are physically next to each other. Yeah, Hard to I'm, know I'm only five screen. ten. Oh, are you five ten? I know when no, I when I first tall. got to meet Dibs in person, I showed him like, God damn, you're tall. <laughs> no, and we're, we're so and short. I'm short. Yeah, I'm five eight. So hmm. all right, play I his... might change my answer on that because oh. I don't know. No, I I think I remember Dibs telling me that that uh, Billy does like Krav Maga or something. I don't remember, Dibs's but I, hands maybe... are huge. Yeah, Let me see true. your hands. But it's you hard to tell. That too. was yeah. Mm -hmm. You're looking on the okay. little screen. Okay, play hey. his last last message and see what it. All right. Question four, and this one's just for abilities. Quite frankly, my skin's peeling off from the lamp oil accident, <laughs> and I'm tired. So here it is. Question four, abilities. You have two sounds to pick from, and you have to scratch one of them for the rest of your life. No other sounds, just one. So pick your favorite. Choose wisely, my friend. Sound one. Ah, or sound two, which is the sound of me applying various oils, herbs, spices, and lubricants above my chest, neck, and <laughs> breasticles. You can imagine what that sounds like. I think we both know which one you want to pick. So go ahead, pick one, and tell everybody why. <laughs> Talk to you soon, home satchel. Love you, homie. Perf. All right, there you go. You can answer that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's difficult. It's difficult. But I probably would have to go with ah, even though <laughs> even though the dibs oil rubbed down, I'm sure there's probably some really unique sounds in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I could ah. affect your answer, you probably will get ah in that as well. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Seems like the rest of it would be pretty quiet, though. So. Yeah, no, Ooh, no, like, it's all. I don't know. Not with him. What about uh, what about the trues and trues and falters? Okay, the first Were we one right was on the those? mosh pit. True, the mosh pit. Yes, that is true. I wow. it was in Austin, and I remember not being happy with my performance, and. He was doing his metal thing. He had his, his routine at that point was very heavy metal oh, right. based. Yep. And I was like, I should start the pit. And he was just like, do it. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I got in there and just started getting it going. And then after that, it was like every day. Then it became a tradition, like every show. I wouldn't start it every show, but somebody would start it. Mm. Yeah. And yeah, it was, it was in Austin, Austin, Texas. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And then the next one was well, on that real quick, I was our our daughter went to a high school dance out of, um recently and she said there was a mosh pit in there and I just thought, how is that even possible? <laughs> Especially in high school. But I guess now there's just mosh pits everywhere, but I guess you brought it to hip hop. 
So the voiceover, at least our world, you know, your shows, yeah, yes, those who did it somewhere else, you know what I mean. But as far as our scene is concerned, yeah, as far as I know, I also stage dive. I was the first person to stage dive too. I came out in Fort Collins at the Aggie, I believe, with my shirt off to Scentless Apprentice by Nirvana, and stage dived at the beginning of the set. Well. Will there be any yeah. stage diving from here on out? I'm not. I'm guessing not, but I, I don't, don't know. Think so. <laughs> can't can't no. uh, fall on that hand. No. I just. I mean, maybe though. I don't know. Yeah, never you never know, never. right? It's yeah. like it was fun. There's like there's definitely a freedom to it, but it's like you, it's just you just got to make sure it's it's that kind of show. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like you can't like just a festival do it. show like, seems like, like a if good it's place. crazy turned up. You know what I mean? Like yeah, like you could probably do it at a Run the Jewels show or something. You know what I mean? Like, sure. Like yeah. People are if people are like this, you could probably do it. Yeah, um, but I don't know. I, maybe I will. Maybe I won't. Right. <laughs> well, well I'm guessing the other one was definitely the second one was definitely false. The voiceovers. <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah, I do love <laughs> 80s music though. <laughs> And then what about the last one, the slap boxing? I did. I did win every single time. Oh, and, wow. and everybody was like dumbfounded by it. But it's just like I have very, very fast hand-eye coordination and reaction time, oh. like very fast. And I am competitive and I am like aggressive. Another thing, like I'm, I'm really good at like NBA basketball game, like the on on tour I would play NBA jams or NBA live and like, on the Living Legends tour, I won every single game. Huh. On the Aesop Rock tour, every single game except one. Sandman beat me one time. The very last day of the tour, I was incredibly hungover. Uh. And I remember <laughs> saying the day before, I was like, this is the last game. This is the last, because he's super competitive. So he got just pissed that I was just running through everybody. <laughs> and... He was like, one more, one more. And I was like, all right, I'll play one more. But this is it. This is the last one I'm going to play. I won. And then the next day on the way to the airport, he was like, one more, man, one more. Oh, he convinced and, and you. I, and I was super hungover. And I was like, who fuck? It doesn't fucking matter. You know, I was like, sure. I guess. <laughs> and, and, he, and he did wind up winning. And he might have won maybe one or two before that, actually. Because he was, he was pretty good, too. But I was like, clearly like, would crush everybody in those games. I just have really fast hand-eye coordination. It's like scratching. Yeah. The scratch. yeah, with yeah. the scratching, yeah. Well, do you, that could be, that could get you, because do you do, do you ride motorcycles or anything? No, but I, I have ridden a motorcycle. I did one time, um, and I got it. It was funny, like, the first time you ride them on a motorcycle, like, by yourself, like, my brother had one, and I rode on the back when I was younger, but when you are in control, it's like, oh, I see why there's like people's whole identities are wrapped up. Yeah. In this. No, <laughs> because I, it's I like, love it. There's a level, yeah, there's a level of freedom and power and excitement and danger. And like, there's like all these things. And it's just like, wow. It just like hit me where I was like, okay, I get it. <laughs> but all those types of things I made. A decision with myself that until my son was like 18, you no, know, until he was like an adult. And like, if so, if there was some kind of track, I don't want to put myself in harm's way mm -hmm. unnecessarily yep. until I know he's an adult and is capable of exactly. taking care of himself. So, like, motorcycle, skydiving, like things like that, like daredevil shit. I was like, mm -hmm. I can wait for those things if, if I even want to do them. I could definitely see myself getting a motorcycle at some point, though. Yeah, we spent a lot of time on them. Yeah, we loved the motorcycles, but then once we had our kids, you know, I sold the motorcycle. The she go. wouldn't ride on the bike with me anymore, and I was like, you know what? We'll just we'll we'll bring the motorcycles back out once the kids are old enough and and can take care of themselves. Exactly, dude. Exactly. Yeah, that's part of being a parent. Well, I know that timer went off, so we'll. Uh, I do. We do have um, uh, a question from Sage, so I don't want to miss oh, out on nice. that. Sage got in, and then we'll let you get out of here, but we'll, we'll, we'll get in your plugs uh, you know, we'll, about things that are coming up after we do the Sage thing, and then we'll let you get out of here. Let's play uh, this video from Sage, um, and this is Sage's social media lurk, so he's uh, probably lurked your social medias and okay. doing something based on that. Well, 
What's up, DOD 45 folks? Uncle Sage here. By the time this episode airs, an album by Black Lick and Mopes called Choices of Chance will already be out. I highly encourage you to check it. Um, it'll be on Bandcamp for two weeks before it hits the streaming services. There's a song on there called Tooth, which I absolutely love. And I think if you hear something like that, you'll be like, yeah, you don't really hear a lot of this in hip hop. And it hits the feels. It's a um, beautiful album. Mopes did wonderful on the production. As always, Black Lick pours his guts out. Uh, keeps it 100, 100, 100. Anyway, and I'm probably on my way to California for a couple shows. Uh, you can get all of that at strangefamous.com. The information. Max! DJ Abilities. What's up, homeboy? <laughs> um, in 2016, you, you tweeted... Uh, so I'm window seat dude next to me is in the middle and no one is in the aisle. This dude <laughs> doesn't move over. Who does that? <laughs> Hashtag weirdo. <laughs> We've shared, uh, quite a few vans together, tour vans, maybe just two, but we did have traveled a lot. We've seen a lot of weird stuff in our day. Does anything in particular stick out as maybe the most common hashtag weird shit you have to deal with? Uh, in your travels, or is there one like major, like, holy shit, this guy is next level weirdo. I can't believe that happened, or he's doing that, or she did that. I'm interested. I love these stories. I hope you're doing well, brother. You're looking awesome. Um, I hope we cross paths sooner than later. And uh, Adrian, Ty, I love you guys too. I'm out. Aww. Strange famous! <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, Thank you, Sage. That was awesome. Yeah. That's really cool that you guys have both Gibbs and Sage to add to this. That's pretty freaking cool. I enjoy cool, it. Yeah. That's way cool to me because, yeah, I mean, I, we started the show because I'm, I'm just a fan of the music. And it, all your guys' music has played while I've created and it built – It's I I credit it as being where I am now with my my artwork and my collectors. And it's the music is what built everything for me. And it was always the inspiration for any of my artwork. So um, it's a huge Full honor circle, for me man. to be talking to any of you. Yeah. So closing the loop. It's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so what about that? Yeah. That's funny. That's shit like that. Does that shit? I know you Yo. like harmony. You like harmony, but that stuff like that sort of makes you go like, what the fuck, dude? Like, <laughs> Well, one thing that I've noticed, particularly like the airport, because the airport is probably the most uncomfortable thing that I have to deal with on a regular basis. And one of the things that I've been trying to think about when I get in situations that are in situations I don't want to be in is remembering that that contrast is, is only going to make me appreciate more when I'm in the settings that I want to be in. So I can kind of use it as a, like a, a slingshot in a way. So it's just yeah. like, Oh, okay. It's like, like a really silly version would be like, let's say you're all, you went for like a really long walk and you're like halfway through, you're like, Oh, I got to go to the bathroom, you know? Mm -hmm. And like you're walking home. I'm just, this is fresh on my mind because I just went to the post office. So this actually happened to me today. And so I'm like, like 20 minutes from my house and I'm like, damn, I got to go pee. <laughs> but then in my mind, I'm like, oh, but it's going to feel so good when I finally get to go. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I've been practicing that in, in my life where it's like if something is uncomfortable or just with something just not the way that I want it to be, I'm like, I can leverage this into making when I'm out of it, it'll be that much better. If yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, that's very boot. Like, I guess is that kind of like a Buddhist? Uh, I, could, I mean, I not, think it's not, but bad or like kind of stoic, like stoic philosophy. Yeah, it's really is, good. Is really, what I've been trying to adhere to. Like, obviously, it's easier said than done. Wait, sure. what is that? that? I've never heard of that. It's stoic. It? It's like Marcus Aurelius. Um, okay. It's uh, it's just a philosophy, and it's really just like focusing on the things that you can control and Marcus Aurelius the from Ro Greek, yeah. uh, Roman. Oh, oh, yeah, he wrote this book. Or really, it's just like his journal, and it's just but a whole philosophy like stemmed from it. And I just I find it's got a lot of wisdom in there, and it's definitely oh, been cool. very helpful for me. Yeah. It is similar yeah, to like Zen and Buddhism, though. It's basically just like exist, you know, focus on what you can do, like 
be in the moment. It's, it's that kind of stuff. Yeah, that makes yeah, living way better. That's how, that's one thing that I think I need to work on and have been trying to work on is not worrying about the things that I have no control over. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That, yeah. Like tornadoes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna. I, if you can, I there. I have these three questions I really, really wanted to ask you. Okay. Um, if you have just a moment, one, that's like you yeah, know, absolutely. Quick. I'm, I'm um, all good, dude. Do you have somebody in your life, professionally or 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 personally, that you can bounce ideas off of, like your creative ideas, to get advice from that you can trust to give you a balanced, honest. Uh, but non-defeating criticism. Do you have somebody I, in your life that you can do that I, with? Yes, and I would say it's my son. Oh, cool! Because my son is going to be a good gauge on like if my son likes it, I I know it's good. <laughs> like because he's yes. not in a situation where he knows he doesn't have to like pretend to like it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yes. our, it doesn't our benefit our, him. Our, our relationship goes a lot deeper than DJ abilities. You know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so for sure. Like, like it's like DJ really doesn't even fucking matter. So it's like, yeah. <laughs> so when I play it for him, he just, either he'd be like, okay, that's like, that's one of his things when he hears hot shit. He'd be like, okay. And, and if he doesn't like it, that doesn't mean that it's not good because he's got his lane of music that he likes. Mm -hmm. But if if he likes it, I usually feel like very confident in it. Yeah, like, you can okay, trust you can trust his his opinion on it. Yeah, it's not the end all yeah. be all. Because like I said, there's this certain nothing is for everybody, right? Right. Yep. But it does make me feel more confident when I know he likes it, and yeah. That's great. That's a great answer. Yeah, you could. Yeah, people. That's a benefit. That's one of the benefits. I know. I go to my kids for a lot of shit. You like, do. a lot of even just existing in this this era of of people. I, I go to them for a lot. <laughs> um, and then the other one is, uh, how are you with critiques of your work? How do you do you do you do you accept them? Do they bother you? Do you just do they go brush right off your shoulders? Um. Well, I'm a like all three. To be completely yeah. honest, so like the in, the initial response will upset me because I I'm an emotional. I feel like most artists are pretty emo, and that's why we make art. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like it, it <laughs> yes. serves us to create art. We we dive into the deep ends of emotions and we pull out art. And so you're just you'll be sensitive, particularly when like you spend a lot of time and like. Case in point, like Phonograph Phoenix, I spent an enormous amount of time on that record. So the initial response would be yes. But then it's like, no, that's like very quickly dispelled because it's like for two reasons. One, I know that I did my best and that's right. all you can do. And I don't want to be after school, especially or whatever, but like, that's really all you can do. If you did your best, that's it. <laughs> like, yeah. And then the last thing is this, nothing is for everybody. You know, like yeah. there's people who think Jimi Hendrix sucks. You know what True, I mean? There's yeah. people who think John Coltrane is annoying. Like it just is what it is. You know what I mean? Like, yep. there's just, it just is what it is. There's nothing for everybody. And then I would even go one step further. The last thing I would add on to that is like, if you're not getting hated on, are you even doing it right? <laughs> you know yeah, it's true. <laughs> like, it's like, because usually if you're like crushing it, those people have like a huge amount of haters. So it's just, yeah. Like, but the, the main one that I would say I stick to the most or that I would like stand by the most, even though I think they all had validity is the simple fact that nothing is for everybody. Yeah. Period. So Yeah. Yeah, it's true. You can't please everyone. And and also, like you said, it's not it's not necessarily to please some it's it's everyone. It's what you do, what feels good to you. The only person you can really please is yourself with what you're creating and then the rest is uh Yeah. Uh it's been exactly. a, it's been such a such a such a pleasure chatting with you. I, I um I wanna let you uh plug some things and, and things that is coming up. Oh, oh, uh what real quick. As a listener, what can what can ruin potentially ruin a good song for you? Meaning, 
Like so, like I'll hear a gr- like a music or yeah, like, like I'll hear a banger of a song. And it just happened to me yesterday, and the lyrics in it were so shitty. And I won't mention who it was, but I just like it. It really bothered me. It took me out of the out of the song, but the song was fucking great. And then all of a sudden, okay. those lyrics came out, and they were. But that so, so that's what was for me. It, lyrics can can destroy a song for me. Okay. Um. Gosh, I don't know. I mean, a bad mix is basically what you're talking about, and I think that's pretty universal. Yeah. Um. Like so, Adrian's is like um, she, that. Like, do you mind if I mention Adrian? That the high that um, I don't even know what they call oh, it anymore. T- that traps t- the trap kind of a high happy. Oh, that the sixteenth notes. I don't yeah. know what that uh, is. That, that'll, that'll yeah, that'll take her right out of a song. <laughs> okay, okay. So let, let, I so I, I see what you're saying. It's like maybe name some things that I don't prefer. Like oh, yeah, did that that kind of throws me off a little bit. Um. And I know there are, right? We all have them. Because case in point, what I just said, like not everything is for everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what isn't for me that I hear? And I'm like, uh, I'm out. (laughs) Um, It's okay if you, yeah, that made you have to stop. Because you know what it is, dude? Yeah. I really, truly believe every genre of music, there is a good version of it. It's like, sure. it's very similar to food. It's like, it's not the style of food that you're eating. It's like, who prepared the food? Mm-hmm. How good of ingredients did they use? Like, you can get a good meal out of any culture's food mm-hmm. if it's the right chef and the right ingredients. So, like, when I'm trying to think of, like, what would would throw me off, it's like there's nothing in particular because I, when I think of music, I'm just like, every, there's something good in everything. Yeah. So it's more just like this overarching, just like low quality of, okay, no, you know what? I got, I found one. Oh, yeah. there it is. <laughs> so, and, and even this isn't every time, but so like when, so like a, a band naturally, since a band is being played by human beings, right? Instruments, particularly mm-hmm. drums, they're breathing to exist, oh. right? So even if they're fucking stiff ass drum players, since they're breathing, there's still velocity. There's still like a three dimensional element to the drums. Yeah. And so a lot of electronic music producers and I, I consider hip hop as electronic music producers sure. using electronics. A lot of people never played instruments, so they don't have that like that understanding and that feel. So and this is particularly beginners, it's so like their drums will just be like totally on the fucking yeah. grid, right? And there'll be no velocity. And vel- by velocity, I mean, uh, like, for people who don't know that phrase, it's like like a hi-hat going like, like louder to quieter. And that would right. be like the mm. kick and the snare. And, you, and you'll use that. It's, it's a term called velocity that will make that have those peaks and valleys. And Because you don't hit the drum so, at the same... Uh, so, yeah, so, like, a lot yeah. of beginner stuff will just be like... Boom, tap, 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 yeah. Boom. And it'll be like stiff as fuck too. So it's like velocity and swing. So like if I hear really stiff drums that are just all in that same range and don't get me wrong, there's some songs that it works for. Sure. And I know there's songs I like that, that hat that technically have that. Um, but at this point in my life, like I want to hear the breath. I want to hear swing on it. I want to hear the three dimensional aspect of it and, and basically like humanizing it. Uh-huh. And yeah. that will make me like it much more. So I won't yeah, necessarily I'm, immediately say no to something, but I'll be much more inclined if I can hear that that humanity in it. And that is just like, you know, I, you know you're talking about drawings right here, right? So it's like, that would be like the equivalent of like really good shading. You know what I mean? Right. Like, mm-hmm. like really nice cross hatching, you know, like it's the details. And once it's like once you can pay attention to those, and once you're you're open to those, you can't. It's like the Matrix pill thing, you know. Like once you hear it, you can't you unhear. Can't it. unhear it. Mm-hmm. That's and right. It's like oh, so like like if you listen to Phonograph Phoenix, like the detail in the drums 
if, if you just listen to it loosely, it's, it's hip hop drums. So it is programmed. Like I do like the sound of programmed drums. Like I remember back in the day when you would see a band that you, a hip hop group that you wanted to see and they would have a band, it would be disappointing. Cause it's sure, like, yeah. I don't want to hear a drummer. I want to hear the producer. I yeah. want to hear mm -hmm. the sound of the programmed drums and the, and the way that sounded. So it's like, but to me, there's a, there's a marriage between that and humanizing it. And that was something I really focused on in Phonograph Phoenix. Like if you listen to that record, just next time you listen to that record, just focus on the drums and see how much time I put in to oh, what I I'm will talking for sure. about. Yeah, I, yeah, because I'll be listening to one while I'm editing the episode. It yeah, makes sense. It makes it me does, think of all the new AI everything. You know, it's gonna be it's gonna be put into like, well, this is how it's technically supposed to be. So dun dun dun. And whereas you're saying to humanize it, and that's what that all that misses. Yeah, humans will. As, you know, and who knows? But as far as I am concerned, humans are always going to be ahead of the curve because this mm -hmm. is the thing. AI is just reading and analyzing what's previously been done. Yeah. Yep. And then humans yep. are making the new thing. And humans always will inherently go against what has been, right? Like that's like a teenage thing. Like you just mm -hmm. naturally will rebel against what has happened before. And mm -hmm. I think that's some like deep, like evolutionary thing. And so... And, you know, who's to say, I don't know, like, just the AI thing is a whole different topic, you know, like, I'm not, sure. we yeah, would be talking for another, like, two hours. Yeah, yeah and it, it, it comes like, up a lot in our discussions, but, too, because, yeah. I hate it. <laughs> but as far as, like, right this moment, the way that I perceive it is, like, it's just analyzing what's already existed. There's new people right now making the new ideas that the AI couldn't even fathom. Yep. And yes. Yeah. So I, I'm I'm pro human. I think humans are gonna. Even though I love science fiction, I think uh, <laughs> I think we got a couple years left. I love science fiction. Over. Me well. too. <laughs> yeah, I'm all about the human, the real human experience, and I, that's something that AI will never be able to create. I don't think. But yeah. All right. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's funny because that's I end the show with a with a with a uh, philosophical question, and that's exactly what it's on. Oh, interesting. Oh, you know what? I have a segment where that's not my cousin. My cousin said sharing music is one of my favorite love languages. And I loved that sentence because that's my, one of my favorite things. One of the reasons we do the show. I love sharing music with people. So I sure. wanted to start putting this in my show. Whose music are you excited to share with others? Oh, I like that. Um, okay. I, I want to think about this for a second because I know that there's – probably a lot of answers to be completely honest um because there's really a lot of talented people out yeah, there so much. yeah you know what i'm gonna do you know what i'm yeah. gonna do i'm gonna do something kind of cool at least i think so <laughs> so there's this this finger followed me yesterday on instagram and i went and checked out her stuff and she was really talented. She had a That's really cool. beautiful voice, intense, like really cool voice, really cool. Her name is Amanda Huff. She's from Milwaukee. And she's probably somebody, nobody on this, who listens sure. to this podcast sure. has heard yeah. of. You know, she's just a local Milwaukee person. Um, she's really, she's really good. Really, really good. I'm interested in hearing more of her stuff. Yeah, we'll have to check her That's out. That's a great answer. Yeah, so that's, that's for, for a cool that. move. But I, I want to add one more person, though, because I know yeah, there's a trying to think of, like, who have I been <laughs> listening to that I'm like, oh, you got to you gotta listen to this. Yeah. I might have to, like, scroll through my freaking, my iTunes, because I'm, I'm an old man and I still buy things <laughs> on iTunes, not my Spotify. Let's see here. 
But it is, yeah, it is exciting to, right? Like it's, or at least for me, I get excited to share something to, to people that I know they haven't heard. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I get a real joy dude. out of that. And that's what my cousin said. It was his, it's, it, it, he said, yeah, that's my favorite language of love. And so. Well, because you know what? By doing that, you're, you're doing that, right? Because the, the person that you're asking that question yeah. is going to do that to all of your listeners at the mm-hmm. same time. Like that's really, really, that's really cool. All right. Oh man. See, now I'm like judging myself. Yeah, you're looking like, Should it be that one? Should it be that one? <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, oh, cause, and I, I want it to be somebody, you know, that's not, that's not overly known too. Yeah. Like, I'm not gonna yeah, be like you should the, check out this band Pantera or something. You yeah, know? right. Exactly. Yeah. I don't know if you ever heard of them. Um, yeah, because I can no he, longer do Aesop Rock. Because I mean, he's my, he's been my number one um, since. Before, yeah, exactly. He's forever. hugely famous, dude. Like, yeah, so I can't famous. do it anymore. I can't be like, oh, yeah. it used to be I could, but now it's like. Okay, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna I'm gonna switch it up. Actually, this is okay. what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna say because I think a lot of the people who listen to this, and maybe I'm wrong, but it's like a lot of hip hop people. Sure. Um, given what you said to me, given the fact that you have Sage Francis and you have Dibs mm-hmm. a part of it, um, I would say I think that people should give Tech House and Bass House the entire genres an open listen, like oh, listen with an okay. open mind, mm-hmm. because I've deeply fallen in love with Tech House and Bass House over the past several years, and I really, really enjoy it. And I used to never like house music or dance music for years. And I finally heard it in the right setting with an open mind. And I love it now. So you can well, be like quite me an too. Endorsement. You open your mind. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I, and it sounds, I don't know, maybe I'm off, but I'm always looking for something new to run to. So sometimes I'll try to go through house music or raise music or... Mm-hmm. And so I'm always looking. So thank you. You just got to find the one that you like, you know, because like there's still a bunch of dance music that I don't like, like a lot of it. I don't like, but I found the stuff that I do and I love it. And it's just like, and it makes me think like, what else is there that I don't know about that I'm going to love that I just Mm -hmm. don't know yet. You know, pretty cool. Well, Well, I, I do want, I do something that I'm noticing just in our conversation just here is like, and I and I and I just wanted to point out that I really respect it. Um, there's consistency to your um, your uh, your being. There's the consistency of like Tim with the answer about um, what don't you like about the music. Your focus, I could see in your mind, your focus was more of well. Th- instead of that what do i like about music and that, that it's a very consistent kind of zen behavior that i really respect and i like I, I i don't know i get goosebumps when i when i meet people who are authentic in that way Your there's glass no is half full kind of yeah person. but but i mean even even someone can say yeah my I, I i'm i'm about positivity but then you hear in their discussion they're constantly not positive you know <laughs> Fair yeah, <laughs> but I, definitely. but yeah, I, I, so I, I just, I just wanted to point out that I really appreciated that because I didn't want to miss a chance to be able to, to say that. Not take that as what it is. It might mean nothing to you, but to me, uh, I just, I really right. appreciate Thank how you. authentic and and um, I wanted to point that out. Well, that's awesome. Uh, Thank you for sharing. Well, hold that. on, real quick. Yeah. Back to the dancing you were oh, just yes. talking about. <laughs> no, that's okay. I was just gonna say. Well, since you're here, the night that we saw you here in Salt Lake was one was I hadn't been able to dance to anything that I like really enjoyed for for years and that was your set was amazing I was blown away oh, and I just had so you. much fun and I was sweating and having a great time so thank and that you. one you could take oh, to I the bank it. because I Adrian rarely likes anything <laughs> sorry okay. Adrian, but she I'm a glasses almost empty <laughs> but she loved your set and yeah so yeah it was awesome. it was fucking awesome here's your final that's, philosophical that's oh, sorry go ahead for that's what I go for. Like I, I, when I, my, my live shows are, are meant to be, if you wanted to sit there and look and be a wallflower and just look, ch- check out the scratching and like, Oh, he mixed that with that. Like 
I basically want it to be like, if you don't want to dance at all, you can have a great time. Or if all you want to do is dance, you can have a great time or anything in between. I wanted mm-hmm. to make that my show. And so that means a lot to me that you said that to me. I appreciate it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It I was, was great. Mission accomplished. I had a great, she danced great the whole, time. Because I don't dance, and she always wants to dance. I always there do. you and go, she, dude. Yeah, she <laughs> boogied both, the whole both night. both of you guys enjoyed it, <laughs> yeah. right? That's the point. Yeah, it yeah. was great. <laughs> it was great. All right, here's your final philosophical question, and we'll let you get out of here. Uh, and that's, uh, So with the recent AI discussions, as we were just saying, okay. human enhancements come up in terms of transhumanism. Uh, which is exceeding the normal biological limits of human physical and cognitive abilities. So despite the obvious advantages to transhuman enhancement in the form of longer lives, healthier immune systems, and enriched capacity for learning, will transhuman enhancements pose risk to personal identity and the ability of humans to live meaningful, autonomous lives, assuming that those who enhance themselves even remain human? It was a long. Oh, so you're saying like they genetically? Okay, I think I think I know what you mean. So there's yeah. a, this book, and they that the whole book is about that, where they think like, you know, how the humans that we are now, we have ancestors that preceded us, and this book poses the question. I think it's Homo Deus is what it's called, and and they pose the question that there'll be a new sapien. That's basically yeah. what you're talking about. And yes. then like homo sapiens won't exist anymore or they'll be relegated to servitude or something like that, which is kind of freaky to think about. Yeah. But um, I think that, I don't think that augmentation, like when you think of like cyberpunk, like if you have like robotic eyes or some shit or like, mm. I, I don't think that that will take away our humanity. I really don't. I think that yeah. we're going to evolve with, technology and what inherently makes us human is still going to remain. I, yeah. I, I really do believe that. Like you could think of a phone is already kind of like that. Like it's this, it's almost a part of us. It's, your phone is almost mm-hmm. like an extra arm or some shit, you mm-hmm. know, it's like, it's so, it's just not part of you, but it might as well be a part of you. And I just, right. I just don't look at it as, I don't think it's going to destroy humanity. I really don't. No. I think that the, the, what makes it'll change it, but the, the core elements of humanity will remain. Yeah. And I, and I think that's a lot of what that black mirror TV show is, is kind of trying to cover. And it's a, it's a it's good it's, show. It is. It's really good. I, I don't think Adrian's watching it, but I keep trying to tell her to watch it, but it's, it's uh, scary. Yeah, it's scary about like how right on they are with things. It's um, yeah. It'll make me think too much. I'm already <laughs> yeah, skeptic. <you> know. <laughs> now, the one thing I could see that would be like I could see like an accident or something, right? Where like AI or computers have too much access to like weapons of mass destruction or something, sure. and something goes wrong. That yeah, way, like a right a term- Terminator scenario. Yeah, something like in, in that, but that it would be like a tragedy or something like that. Yeah, but even then, it's I don't know. Like spending too much time thinking about that just seems like a giant waste of time right. and mm-hmm. like yeah, and, it's, so. and honestly, it's kind of like a meant to be. Like if that's what's meant to be, who knows? Like maybe. You know, when, when the meteor hit and, and destroyed the dinosaurs, it was maybe the, the overarching part of the universe, that's our meteor, is AI. And we're only yeah. supposed to be here for this amount of time because the next level of sentience is supposed to have their turn. Like, who's mm-hmm. to say? You know what I mean? So... Yeah, those of the ones who... Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> that's great, great fucking... Fantastic answers a fantastic <laughs> discussion. Like just, yeah, it was just, it was, it was really beyond, um, uh, what I could have hoped for. And I, and I, yeah, and I appreciate fun. you for that. What, what, um, any new solo albums coming up? Uh, what can people expect from you over the next few years? What's, uh, well, anything in, in specific that you can mention? If not, how do people, what's your preferred method for people to stay informed with what you're doing and, or what's coming up? So I do have another record, like a, a a part two kind of in a in a way to phonograph Phoenix. So oh, cool. it's just, it's an album that I made in the exact same way. It's obviously just new songs. Um, that's almost done. 
Uh, and then, you know, talking about Tech House and Bass House, I've been creating original music in those genres for several years now. And I finally have completed some and I sent some two to be exact to get mixed and mastered. So oh, cool. I'll have new music out, a whole new genre. I'll, I haven't decided on the, the name I want to use for it yet. So, but I'll be as far as what you're putting it. out, what you're like the name of the album or what you're going to put the music out as. Uh, is it different? When I do the the dance stuff, it'll be a different name because oh, okay. the the show that I've curated as DJ abilities, I'm really proud of and really like my show that way. Yeah, and when you're doing dance music, that's what it's meant to be. It's meant to be yeah. dance music. So they're two different things. You know, yeah. it's like. And well, so, maybe you can wear a mask for that one. Nah, <laughs> no, 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 nah, no, no, nah. but that, but that would be the, that would be the time. Yeah, I actually that would be the time. About doing it completely anonymous for a while and just being like, "Hey, I'm just going to do it and not make the connection." And I was like, "Why? Like, it's still right. the same person." And like, not all of my fans are going to like it, but I was like, "I bet you a lot of my fans are going to like it because mm -hmm. it still sounds like me." You know what I right. mean? Like, yeah, it's yeah, still me. It's still my sound choices, the way that I approach music. It's just at 125 BPM, basically. Mm -hmm. um, so there's that. And then I got into modular during the pandemic. So what I want to start doing, I, I did two already. I, they're really simple. Just I got inspired. So I, so I recorded myself. I made a beat on my modulars. I um, scratched over it. I recorded it. I put it on my Instagram and my Facebook and... And they did well and people seemed to like them and I liked doing it. So oh, that's the, the third thing that I'm going to be working on is um, actually figuring out how to light myself properly, record myself properly, mm -hmm. and then just make something on the modular, then scratch to it, but have the, the, um, have it high quality instead of just yeah. my phone, you know what I mean? To the side, like making it really high quality. And, and I learned how to edit video. So I learned how to use Final Cut Pro. So I have full videos when you come, next time you guys come see me in Salt Lake City, um, which I'll probably be back out there in summer. I have a full video set now. So I oh, found awesome. all these different videos, basically DJ videos to my set. Right. And, did and you, through that. Did you ever, sorry, i sorry. No, no, I, no, did ahead. you ever work in the video, in, in video editing? No. I figured Prior? it out this past no. I figured it out this past year because I was like, you know, I'm always trying to make things better. And so I was like, okay, how yeah. can I make my set better? And the it's clear answer similar. is like, yo, add video. I was like, if I add video to my set, it will be better. And, and are you like, enjoy? Are you enjoying the editing of the video? Like video yeah, editing. Once, once I learned, like there was a lot of temper tantrums and shit learning sure. the new software. You know, because you're like, ah. But once I got the hang of it, I definitely enjoyed it. It was a lot it's of fun so, because it is fun. Well, because the thing about it too is like the music is already done, and that's the most important part. So like that's mm -hmm. the part that is very painstaking, and like I really have to make sure it's through the roof awesome. The video, it's just an add-on thing. So like the video, it's much less stressful. It's more just like, mm -hmm. oh, this would be cool. Mm -hmm. And that's what, like that's all it has to be is like cool. So like case in point, so I have a cold as ice remix that I do, oh, nice. and I just put uh, when Luke Skywalker gets attacked by um, the snow monster on Hoth in Empire Strikes mm -hmm. Back, I just put that scene with like a couple oh, edits yeah. to make the drums match up. Sure, to my cold as ice remix. You know, it's like it's not mind blowing. But it's like, but it's, it, it's, and it's, it's, but it's fun. Yeah. It's yeah. Just cool. <laughs> and like, and like I play simple minds. And so like I edited some of the breakfast club footage. So like when they're dancing, like it lines up with the song yeah. and like, it's like, again, it's not mind blowing, but it's cool. Yeah. And so it was like editing. Once I learned how to do it, which was work and which was annoying, then it became fun. Cause it was just yeah. like, Oh, let me just scour YouTube and, look for cool videos that I can add to. It's really like, it's not stressful. Whereas yeah. making my actual sets is stressful. Cause it's like, oh, like you'll have a transition and you'll be like, I know it could be better. And then you'd like try a million different things and it's not working. And you're just like, 
<laughs> does that then set you having the video background does that then set you to an exact routine that you that makes it hard to um Perform go life? you know i actually well i do it I, that's how i do it anyways one. though that's how yeah. i do it anyways that's why the video made sense because i don't dj off the fly like my set is a okay. set. like i spend so much time making sure everything works perfectly so, so you know like, right where you're gonna cut absolutely and do absolutely everything. and Got so it. when okay. i when i think of the and i'll make adjustments on the fly if i feel it's necessary right if i'm like oh this song didn't do as good as I thought. Maybe I should jump to this next one. But very rarely. I'd say nine times out of 10, 19 out of 20 maybe, maybe even more, okay. I do it exactly that, how I planned on doing sense. it. That makes sense with what we're getting from you is like it, you seem to be very regimented. Would that be the right word? I definitely um, am, yeah. Yeah. So that, okay. That makes well, think sense. about it. This is one of the reasons why you had fun at the show because it's not me sitting up there fumbling around thinking yeah. about it. Right. Like yeah. I already figured out this should go to this, should go to this, to go to this. Like I already went the, 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 the roller coaster that you got to go on. I already went on that ride a thousand times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I figured out exactly, Oh, here should be a, a, a jump and yes. here should be a left turn. And like, because yeah. I've, I've gone through the process and learned like, uh, no, it should be a right turn there. Or it should be the, this much should be this much longer. It's like, you just trust yourself and your emotion and how it feels for you. And, it, and if it's fun for you, then it's like, okay, now this might be fun for somebody else to, to do. And, and that's the, the hope. And then so adding the video, since I already know what I'm going to play, I think about that with the video too. Where it's like, if I have a very colorful video, chances are on the next song, I'm going to go for something that's more monochromatic or black and white. So I'm thinking about the visuals in the exact same way contrast wise as i'm thinking about music mm -hmm. yeah that's or like fun. if there's like jagged edges it's like then i'll go with something like wobbly or something you know what i mean yeah. it's like it's very it's contrast peaks and valleys mm -hmm. like yeah all of those things and like and to bring it back to harmony when you can get a wide palette and 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 create harmony out of it that's when you're doing cool stuff that's very cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. I'm excited to see it. Hopefully, we'll be around Salt Lake when you're around yeah. Salt Lake. Well, uh, yeah, uh, I think we got it all. Is there any final words you have for anyone for for the people in the world? Uh, thank you to everyone who has been rocking with me throughout the years, and thank you to anybody who's going to go check me out after watching this episode. And I hope you yeah. like what I do. Awesome. Oh, where do you prefer that? Where, where, what's the preferred method for people to stay up to date with what you're doing? I probably am most active on my Instagram, okay. but I do use Facebook pretty regularly. I, I use all, I use Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Those are the ones I use. I do have TikTok. I'll probably start using that a little bit more. But you know, at this point, I'm old. It's just like ah, yeah. no, another one. Like, another one. I know. Like, I know. Like, but, I, but uh, just, through any of those, though, someone will know any shows that you're gonna. You're, just you're gonna go to my make. Instagram or, or Facebook. Oh, that's that's how I look at it. Like, it's, you probably have Instagram or Facebook. Yeah. And all of my stuff will be on there. But if you want to, um, see me posting the most regularly i'm i post the most on instagram i like that okay. one the most. when i forgot i i used to I always ask this question i got away from it i wish i didn't what uh for people I, it's surprising to me if someone doesn't know you or your work but for anybody who doesn't if it's their first time hearing you what do you prefer what would be the thing you would want them to first listen of yours that w is going to show them what they can expect from you um, I would say uh, you know, three songs jumped out at me, so I won't overthink this. And it's a song, two idea and ability songs. It's now and smile. And then the first step from phonograph Phoenix, because I think now and smile are my favorite songs that I made with idea. And I'm incredibly proud of those songs. And then the first step is the, literally the first step into what I'm doing now. Yeah. So I would say check out those three songs. That's perfect. That's the perfect answer because that's what it is. Anyone who doesn't know, they go listen to those and then they'll know what they can expect. If they like those, they'll continue 
going through your catalog. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, man. I, it's Again, I said it a million times, but it's really a pleasure having you on the show, and we really appreciate you joining us. And um, and that's it. I'll get this drawing detailed way more, and, and I'll get it sent out to you as soon as it's, as soon as I get it finished, which should be in a, a week or so. And, Looking fresh. Yeah. yeah, thank you. All right, you have a great rest of your day today. Cool. You as well. All right, man. Thanks so Bye. much. Cheers. Bye. Peace. Bye. Uh, yeah, that all was great. Uh, it was really that was a good conversation. Uh, and it really wasn't um, how I thought it was going to go. So, so I'm yeah, I'm, I'm glad it went. It went. I had some specific stuff that I wanted to try new as far as my conversation tactics. Uh, <laughs> not tactics, but you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. I made mental notes of like, Just don't. Do I know this. you edit, so you hear. Yeah, yeah. When I edit an episode, I hear myself saying some stuff that bothers me after hearing it so many times and so i made the conscious effort of trying to eliminate some of those things and and it also helps when you have a guest on who's very good at like um follow up or like uh in the in the discussion they can go into deeper heavier detail not yes or no answers and and uh, ability is is uh good at that i mean he's a professional he's been doing this you know he knows how to talk about what he's what he does so yeah yeah it was perfect and his show was really cool i i i don't i don't um kiss ass as no you say. don't <laughs> so, so i i really really was impressed with the show I and i were. really enjoyed it yeah you danced that whole i really <laughs> did yeah, yeah and, but it was i mean it, and it's not i mean it's rightfully so it was so good it was great um uh, one thing i did want to bring up was we were talking about ai i always talk about ai and i did recently see and i i've got it in my notes here but there somebody came out with a um, thing for artists so that it makes that um what is that dolly and what's the other ai for art oh i don't know that it doesn't scrub your um your personal art okay so um researchers release free app that protects artists work from being scraped by ai training models program adds nearly um imperceptible am i saying that right i don't know I actually Changes. don't even know what you're saying. Oh, I'm reading. Oh. So this the there's summary? a program that makes the makes it so that the AI can't notice your art on when it's scrubbing the internet. Mm-hmm. So there's a program out there for artists who don't want their art to be scraped apart by AI and added to somebody else to this, you know, art that's uh-huh. being generated. So it does something that will protect your art from being scrubbed mm-hmm. by AI. You have to apply that to every single one of your art, your pieces that are out there in the world, though? You know what? I don't know. Yeah. It's an app. Yeah, maybe it just it goes works. over your um, Maybe it just goes over your website. Mm. Yeah, that's cool. But I don't know. But what happens if someone uses that app on artwork that's not even theirs? Yeah, I don't know. That's all a slippery slope. What? that? So that you, you wouldn't want? I mean, I don't think any artist would want their art scrubbed to be taken apart and used as part of an AI Right, but what if someone takes that and does that to your own art, and then when you're trying to do something with your own art, it's been scrubbed? No, it just makes it so that the the computers won't read it. Okay, you can cut all this out. No, 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 it's fine. bored by it. Uh, No, 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 no. I I don't know enough. I don't know enough about the... The AI to get so caught from up what I understand is it will take like you can put in like okay ballpoint pen drawing mixed with octopus and and uh, what is that little character wild things and it'll scrub the internet to look for things like that mm-hmm. and I think it even almost cuts it out and pastes it mm-hmm. to some degree so it could very well just be like oh here's some put yeah it's not a good I mean yeah I, well we're not fans. All I'm saying is, there's a program that can maybe uh, that can make it so that, that the computers can't read yeah. your read your your art. Yeah, that's all. No, that makes sense. Yeah, because I think that's what they kind of like have in in YouTube uh, when the music plays. Then it can the AI in their or their in their system says, "Oh, this is music that's copyrighted. You can't." Yes, use it. so it's something like that. Yeah. So if you wanted your images protected, that's. 
something that could be available to you. That's yeah. Well. Uh, I wanted to do a – before the episode, I just wanted to do a quick tribute. I know it has nothing to do with the show. But I did want to mention I, I had a, a cousin um, who passed away recently, um, and I just wanted to, to do a quick little tribute to him, or not a tribute, like a little uh, eulogy or something, or like a discussion of him. Um, I was able to go see him uh, before they shipped him because they had his body transported. Uh, I haven't seen him in about 10 years, maybe even longer. Uh, uh, but yeah, he was a cousin that lived with us and, uh, I loved the kid. I, I, I really did loved him to death. So, um, it's a sad, he was, um, only a year younger than me. Uh, he was, a you know, he's, he was an OG, like a founder of a very prominent gang. Um, so that's he, the kind of life that he led, but he was such a, just a, um, a really nice kid, you know, he was just good. I don't know. He had a good heart. He had a great laugh. Uh, one of the what, there's about four times in my life when I was certain I was going to die, and that's not like hyperbole. Like I definitely thought at, in the moment, I thought, okay, this is how how my life ends. And one of them was in a bathroom bar, and it was um, f- from me misusing uh, his name to some other gang members, um, a rival gang. Uh, it was my fault. But I had mentioned his name, and anyway, I about got murdered in a bathroom. <laughs> but uh, that, that's how prominent he was as a figure, and that, just his name alone <laughs> nearly got me killed. But uh, I met him when I was 16 years old, and he was uh, 15. And the first time I met him, he came and he was living, and he came to live with us, with my family. And that day I met him, I was trying to land a handrail uh, at this the silver handrail I was skateboarding and I was just trying to learn how to do, you know, uh, uh, rail slides. And so he, I first, I met him, he was like this wild looking kid. And I was like, and my parents were like, Hey, here's your cousin. He's living with us. (laughs) So we got in the car, I gave him a camera and had him film me trying to land this handrail. That was our first minutes of meeting each other. And then he lived with us ever since. Um, I mean, for a while, off and on, his brother also came to live with us, his younger brother, who was also a year younger than him, and he used to do these beer runs for us. We were wild kids. But he got arrested, his younger brother, and spent. he's been in prison ever since. That was when we were about 16. I'm 45 now. He's been in prison since for that long, going in and out, which sucks. But this cousin of mine who's passed away, he also was uh, in and out of prison. And um, But it was just always so strange to me because he was so – nice you know like he had a good heart he was just so good but he just was caught up in the gang and his family had a very um strange living um his brother his older brother who also lived with us at a time uh he was shot nine times uh the final shot they shot him through the head um but he managed to crawl to a, a, a house and knock on the door and have him call the ambulance. And he lived and survived. That's not like, and that was also probably, I think, gang, some sort of gang related. But this cousin who I'm talking about who got shot, he wasn't gang affiliated at all other than his, but, other than his brother. But the neighborhood that <laughs> and they the grew they grew. up in was, they, they, it was unavoidable. Yeah, they lived in Inglewood. And in Hawthorne and in Glendale. And um, yeah, I had been to the place when I was younger. I w- went to their house in Inglewood and it was terrifying. I mean, they lived. I, I guess my point is that most people um, don't, like most people don't know people who live lives like that. Right. Well, and I, and you I don't. hear about it through music and other arts. Yeah. And you can only, you can, you know of it, but you can't, it's hard to, actually place yourself in it's in near. reality because we i mean when we drove through got lost yeah you'd like oh this is that place we better get out of here yeah it's it's a it's yeah yeah and i and i say it as like it's strange i call it a strange way to grow up because like i said yeah we we that's only my family is the only family that i know that's actually like lived in that way growing up in gang life in the street like 
in a really like in a in a gang neighborhood. Well, that's why I find the Wu Tang saga fascinating. I know because they're from a lot of them are from the projects and just to it's just it's fascinating. It it is. It's a different life than most of us ever interact. With. We we don't know anybody that. But anyway, yeah. He, Oh, he was this cousin of mine. He was with me when I was when we were in Samoa when I got my first tattoo. I'm gonna try to play that video. Uh, I love the kid. Um, he would always tell me. I I would always tell him, you know, you got to get out. You know, you you got to get out of this lifestyle. And he would always tell me, you know, I'm young. Uh, I'll get out of it at some point, but I'm having fun right now. But he did always know that he was not like he it, he he. He suspected he wasn't going to make it past 30. So he did make it past 30. And, and um, I regret that I didn't, wasn't able to spend you know, or much time with him later after we had kids and he was still doing gang living and kind of on that edge or stuff. I was just, you know, for my family, sort of. Uh, well, I don't, I'm not trying to But you shouldn't it. regret that you didn't spend the last however many years with him because you guys are on different paths and you still cherished or hopefully you still cherish Absolutely. Those- times that you had and he's still the same human you guys were just yeah just went on diff- different yeah, things that's true well and i did the reason i was bringing it up i did want to tell this quick story about him as thug as he was like so thug i'm telling you that like he's tattooed with his gang all over and it's a prominent gang <laughs> and he's og of it but uh one time when we were living at my parents house me, uh, we were when Adrian and I first got together. She moved in with us at my parents' house, and my cousin. Everybody moved in. Everyone moved house. into my family's <laughs> house, and my cousin was living there at the time. But he had we, just gotten out of prison. Oh, that's right. He had just got like, out of just prison, barely. and so he was come back to live with us and work for my work for my dad mm-hmm. to get himself on the straight and narrow. Well, we were watching the movie Scream, and it's the greatest because I wish I could. I wish I had a picture of it, but. And this will only work for the people watching the not listening, but watching. He was like on the couch, hiding under the fucking blanket. <laughs> he was terrified. He was terrified of the movie Scream. And like, I just remember, I can just hear his voice. It's so great. Every time like something scary would happen, he'd go, he would like have the blanket like this and he'd go, oh, shoot. Oh, yeah. Oh, shoot. <laughs> like, just fucking terrified i know it, it, it was funny we it were was getting a kick daring. out of it yeah it was just it and again you just have to picture this like og thug terrified of a fucking movie the movie scream yeah well <laughs> uh yeah <laughs> well rest in peace um we were, him and i were named after um uh, my great uncle my great uncle ty uh in samoa we were both named after him and yeah i love the kid and uh so uh, rest in peace, Tofa. Um, well, Adrian, sign us out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just going to sit and watch you cry. I didn't cry. You were saying all the time, like, well, I knew I was going to die. Or whatever, and <clears throat> you weren't going to be sad about it. Well, you know, I, that's what I do with <clears throat> with the deaths in our in our lives. I block. I, <clears throat> ah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I do you a block thing, it out. I, you're I don't, not blocking it out now. No, I know I don't block it out. I do a thing where I go to lessen the pain of it. I just go, oh well, that's that. That's what it was supposed to be. That's how I've kind of done a lot of death in our in our lives. I just go, well, that, well this is their time to it's sort of. It's my way to not have to feel <laughs> or not feel, but you know, no, I don't like to. I don't like to feel sad. Uh, let me lighten it up. Speaking of scream, uh, Jamie Kennedy once bought one of my paintings. Oh, that's right. Uh, he's a you know he was in Scream. He saw me at a show in in Utah and and, and uh, he bought a painting. The he, rabbit. The rabbit. Yeah. And that's the painting he bought for me. And me and my daughter and Ollie went to go see Scream 6 uh, together. Uh, she really likes the Scream movies, and I like that. That's cool, because I loved horror movies. So there, that got me out of that. All right, any Adrian, do you have anything you want to say? No. Abilities, thank you so much for joining us. It was a great chat. Sage Francis, thanks for always for your um, social media lurks. And uh, Mr. Dibbs, thank you so much for your question. And for you know keeping us, keeping the ball rolling on this. 
From all of us here, I'd like to wish you happy drawing, happy conversing, and thanks for conspiring with us. We out. Peace. Cheers. D-O-D-45. Thank you for joining in on yet another episode of the DOD45 show. Please hit the subscribe or follow button so that you never miss an episode. You can even go one step further by leaving us a review on the YouTube stream or on Spotify, Apple Podcast, or wherever it is that you stream our show from. You can find me at Art by Ty on all the socials or at artbytai.com. And if you'd like to follow the DOD45 show on social media, we're at DOD45W on Instagram, or you can go over to our website at DOD45.com where you can shoot us an email, join our mailing list, and watch all of our past episodes consider joining us for a live chat on the youtube premieres of episodes every wednesday night at 8 p.m eastern peace